It is the beginning of the end. The fittest athletes in the world have descended on Madison, Wisconsin for one last ride. Welcome to the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games, and for the final time, the fittest on earth will be crowned at the Alliant Energy Center. Thanks for joining us, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland with Chase Ingram. Nikki Brazier and Mike Arsenault will be joining us in just a moment. But Chase, the bikes are back. Sixth time we've had it at the CrossFit Games. Fourth time we've had it here in Madison. But Sean, this will be the longest amount of time these athletes will spend racing on these bikes. The recipe for success here is delivered by Trifecta. Simple, confidence on the bike. Do you know how to use this? Are you comfortable going fast? But confidence in the terms, that technical piece of this race may be the deciding factor of who wins and who loses. Mike Arsenault and Nikki Brazier have us covered out on the competition course. Let's send it down to them, starting with Mike Arsenault. Thank you very much, Sean. It's called ride, but I'd argue the most important verb for the athletes on this test will be run. On each and every lap, the athletes will bike toward this plywood barrier. They'll have to dismount and get into the transition area. They'll run with their bikes 85 meters down this grassy decline, make a left turn 30 meters straight away, and then an 85 meter incline that will hammer their quads and glutes on each lap. 200 meters of running, 2,400 meters of biking. And for how these athletes will finish this test, let's go to Nick. Keep Razor. Hey, Mike, thank you. Another twist to get at you. Just a short distance from the starting line are these pylons right behind me. Now, at the 40 minute mark, the equipment team will bring these pylons out, effectively creating a gate. The athletes that make it through the gate will race to the finish, and the first one there wins. The athletes who don't make it through the gate at the 40 minute mark will be ushered off the course, and they will fall behind the leaders in the rankings. All 40 women will be out on the course for this opening test. 20 women in front, 20 women in back. The higher ranked athletes will be towards the middle. And for the second straight year, we are starting with the test on the bikes. The top two finishers from Ride to Work, not here. That's Haley Adams and Tia Toomey. Laura Horvath is here. She has stood on the podium before at the CrossFit Games, including the last two years, but this year, She's looking to stand on top of it. She got fifth at Bike to Work last year. She also got second in the crit in 2018 and two second place finishes in a third. This is the year that Laura is looking to win the CrossFit Games. She was second overall her rookie year in 2018, then struggled a couple years in 2019 and 2020. The last two years though, third in 2022, second in 2021. And once again, the favorite to win the whole thing here at the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. Cross the country. Let's ride. <laughs> yes. And one thing to note is that it's going to be a rolling start. So the once they get past this basically starting point is where the chip timers activate and the race begins. The reason for that is they'll have to stay behind Adrian Bosman. He'll peel off and then the race will begin instead of a mass start where there could be some jostling for a position and putting athletes in a dangerous spot. That rolling start helps them get a safe start to the race. Now the numbers on front of the bikes, those are the lane numbers. There'll be a different number on front of the bikes and on the athlete jersey as well. And Sean, as we said, this is 40 minutes max laps but once they close that 40 minute gate, you're either past the gate or you're not. And then it's your time it takes to cross the finish line. It is still a race to the finish for all these athletes out here on the course. So already we're starting to see some separation amongst the leaders. Now these athletes have had an opportunity to ride this course previous to this, get used to their bike, get fitted for their bike. You see it's a pretty slow start. You've got all 40 athletes jammed up. We have 22 total turns in this race. 14 or 15 of them are a bit more technical. That's almost that 180 turn or, or, or loop back. And what you'll probably see is a lot of athletes are going to take their time in the first lap. If there's a big group in front, is just get used to the course, kind of wake their body up, get used to the racing, the turns, the elevation changes, and then we'll start to see some separation about the last lap or first two laps. Jamie Simmons followed by Laura Horvat and Emma Watson. Those are your top three here. 40 minutes is when the gate will close. As you heard Nikki mention earlier, any athlete makes it through the gate will complete one final lap. 
first person to the finish line wins. And again, your score is number of laps completed. So if I do nine, you do eight, I get the winning time. But if there's half the field on lap nine, then that's when the time element comes into play. The first one across the finish line, that's their time plus the nine laps. And Catherine Davis daughter has now moved into fourth place. Laura Horvath is out front ahead of Jamie Simmons and Emma Lawson. Emma Lawson, who last year got third in bike to work behind Haley Adams, but just behind Tia Toomey, where she spent the majority of the race drafting off of her. And that's an element to this race that some athletes really could work together potentially for 40 minutes to make the 40 minutes easier as a group. And there is Laura Horvath, who is now starting to pull away from the three women behind her, Jamie Simmons, Emma Lawson, and Katrin David's daughter. You can see these little switchbacks on the course. And in this course overall, it's a bit of a blend of cycle cross and cross country mountain biking. The time domain, 40 minutes. You know, sprint course races in Mount Cross Country Mountain Bike are about 20 minutes. Olympic distance, 70 to 80 minutes. This is right in between. Cycle cross is a bit more muddy, right? It's, a, it's usually a wintertime sport, so the technicality of the turns. Uh, cross country biking, there's, there's a bit more things in the way. So this is a nice blend of the two when it comes to this race. Horvath still out front, followed by Simmons, Lawson. Davis' daughter is in the top five as well. Now, there is a scenario where the leader and the eventual winner of this test could hit the gate. That would happen if Laura Horvath, for example, laps the field, is a lap ahead, gets cut off at 40 minutes, but she would still win because she would be a lap ahead of everybody else and would have the best time. And the reason being is that that finish line or, or timeline for the lap is actually before the actual physical gate itself. So she could be on lap 10 and gets basically her time of 40.01 would be her race split time for the 10th lap where everybody else would be behind her. Or about taking a look over her left shoulder to see where her pursuers are. And she is all by herself right now. We approach the five minute mark, 40 minutes before they close the gate. Now, that is a soft 40 minutes as Horvath will hop off the bike now and enter her first running portion. But if there is a pack approaching the gate, they're not going to close it at 40. They're going to let those people through. Hey, right. first, we're not, they're not trying to we're not cause any wrecks out there. Uh, into it, but this is the run portion of the race course. So as you see on your screen, 2,400 meters on the actual bike, 200 meters on the run. This run's going to take somewhere between, I would say, 45 to 60 seconds. 45 may be a, a bit aggressive uh, on that time check, but it's enough time to have a decent impact on the way people navigate the course. And what's going to be interesting here is that the run portion, every lap, is going to get tougher and tougher as their legs get more tired as the race continues. If you've ever done a triathlon, getting off a bike, if you've been on it for 10, 12K, those first, I don't know, 800 to 1,600 meters off the bike, it's a little squirrely. Captain Davis Otter was able to close the gap significantly on Laura Horvath as Davis Otter moves into second. Lawson is behind them, and it's Karin Freova in fourth. Katrin riding the, the back wheel, and this is the backside stretch. This will be the longest stretch these athletes will have on a, I would say, close to a straightaway as you can. You're coming off the turn, it's downhill half the way through. You got a nice straightaway, but this is the issue sometimes when you run yourself into the front of the pack is that everyone's just going to sit on your wheel. And that was some of the problems we saw in crit, where nobody was going to take ahead or take charge there. But at the same time, you can also dictate the pace as well. A lot of times you'll see, okay, the straightaway is where I'm going to try to gain the most time, where I can go the fastest. But with the amount of turns that we have on this course, Sean, it's actually the turns where you want to try to lose the pack. Those technical turns where maybe you can gain a second every turn. Let a, the straightaway, I think this is your one chance to recover every lap. 
Approaching the seven minute mark here. Timing presented by G Shock, the official watch of the Noble CrossFit Games. And it's still Horvath, David's daughter, and Lawson, your top three. Now, Annie Thoris' daughter now starting to make a bit of a move. She's on the number three bike. It's good to see Annie back in competition and Katrin back in competition. Annie went team last year. Katrin missed the games for the first time since 2014. And Katrin Davis' daughter, if you look at events that are very similar to this, we'll go back to 2017 and 2018. 2017, cycle cross, same course. Not exactly the same course map, but the same place. She got third in crit in 2018, which is just 10 laps for time around the uh, the campus. She got third. Katrin is a very good biker when it comes to the CrossFit Games. Annie Thor's daughter, fifth and seventh. Bethany Flores is another athlete that we may not be thinking about. Of a fifth and second, and it's what is that? Emma Carey. Emma Carey is the... toward the back here, but it's still early. Is we are one lap completed, and here's oh. the replay of what happened. Matilda Garnis, Sahir Kaya got mixed up in the turns. Oh wow! Then Emma off the side of the course. Now, if that were to happen later in the race, it would be a bit more devastating. Um, hopefully, coming across for her first lap. nothing technical happened to the bike, nothing physically damaging happened to Emma. She's got 32 minutes to try to catch the pack. For her, it'll be playing, uh, call it the fishing game, right? You pick someone in front of you, slowly try to reel them in, maybe use them to draft your way up through the, 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 the main pack. Nine minutes gone by here. Laura Horvath had the top split time on her first lap of six minutes, 26 seconds. And Laura did the same thing on the first lap where she pulled ahead of the field, but then they all caught her after that first 200 meter run. And Katrin David's daughter, I believe is out front now. She has overtaken Horvath for the lead. One of the big questions coming in this weekend was, how is Katrin David's daughter going to fare after basically missing a year from last year? And, the, you know, if you look at stats of Katrin David's daughter making the games and missing the games, and then her performance when she comes back to the games, pretty solid. Missed in 24, made in 2013, missed in 14, won back-to-back -back 15 and 16. Emma Lawson is now in second place ahead of Laura Horvath. And it's Emily Rolf in the number 24 bike on the outside. They're moving up as well. Annie Thor's daughter still there. Freyova. And you saw Emma Tall, the number seven bike. And now it's Catherine Davis out of here, lap number two. You see the fields starting to separate themselves in little clusters of athletes as Catherine Davis out on the bottom right part of your screen is leading the field, but we saw Laura Horvath do the same thing in the first lap. Now can the field cat, catch Catherine as the field did for Laura on the second one? Now Catherine Davis out was able to make up significant ground on Horvath on that first transition area. As now it's Emma Lawson in second, Horvath in third, and Emily Rolf in fourth. Emily Rolf, really only event she did last year at the, the CrossFit Games was bike to work as she had a, a basically a blood clot that was basically stopping any circulation that I believe was in her left arm. But Emily Rolf is a great endurance athlete, especially when you talk about running. And she still got, I think, like a top 12 finish last year in bike to work. And that was with pull-ups and chest to bar, uh, and toes to bar mixed in there. I had to have emergency surgery to get that blood clot out of her arm. As David's daughter is off the bike. Here's Emma Lawson, Horvath, and Emily Rolf there as well. And Sean, look, she had a, an extensive lead, but in one stop an obstacle, everyone's caught wrap back up to her. It's it's not really beneficial to send yourself out by yourself early in, in these laps. Working together, 
they do this in cycle cross. They do this in, in, in road races. Work together. It's an individual event across the board, but work together as a group to get ahead of this other pack of the field. Emily Rolfe on the outside has moved into third ahead of Horvath, and looking like she's trying to chase down Lawson for second. And I believe that Lawson is now ahead of David's daughter. So this transition yeah, is big on, here. Keep her on the transitions, how people get on the bike. Alexis Raptus, number eight, just dumped her bike, but she's back to work here. So she has moved up towards the front of the pack. It's now Emma Lawson, your leader, followed by Catherine Davis' daughter and Emily Rolfe. Back stretch, David's good straightaway. Opportunity to catch your breath a little bit. Lawson it's slightly downhill here, off. not by a whole bunch. Daughter, Simmons. Now lap two next is done. Magala coming across for lap number two. We are 13 minutes in. Here comes and it was Emma Lawson Lawson who had the fastest split on that well. lap. Got See across that. in 12.53. That gravel line is about the base in. of the, the downhill portion when it goes slightly uphill. There's not a massive elevation changes on this course, but there are six significant ones, usually around some of the more technical turns. So a turn at the base of a 180 degrees, but then you go straight up the hill. So navigating your gears, that's one thing we really haven't discussed yet. That's part of the technical aspect of this race. The course I would say again, it's relatively flat, more just like rolling up and down. So you're probably working with that make two to three gears back and forth against each other. Two Canadians out front, Emma Lawson and Emily Rolfe here on lap number three. And we're not even halfway through the 40 minute cap where the gate will close and the, close and the leaders who make it through race to the finish. Third lap, third lead change we've seen so far, but the same result is that the top rider Got about 10 to 20 meters on the second place athlete or even the second place pack. This is a bit more of a stretch than we've seen any athlete take so far. You mentioned that bike to work test last year. Emma Lawson finished third in that opening test. Good job, Emma. Good job. And was one of the reasons why she had the overall leader's jersey at one point last year in her rookie year. And the, the question in the beginning of the year last year is like, would she even go individual? She still had one more year of eligibility in the team division and ended up wearing, as you said, Sean, the leader jersey at one point. And the, the, the confidence that you could gain from something like that, not just qualifying as an individual as a teenager. I think she just turned 17 when she made the CrossFit Games as an individual last year. But to put on the jersey with the likes of Laura Horvath's, Tia Toomey's, the Mal O'Briens of, of last year. It, it's got to be a great confidence boost for a young athlete. Emma Lawson finished sixth overall last year. And of the 14 tests, she was inside the top 10 in seven of them. Faded a little bit towards the back, but did finish third in three separate tests. Bike to works the skill speed medley and then up and over. So slide downhill on this gravel. She's got to be careful in this turn because the the most dangerous turns you can make are something like loose sand, loose gravel. So it's not the most imperative turn to get a little bit of speed, maybe coast, let that quad pump settle down a bit on the bike horses. You know, Sean, we let off is like, this is the longest bike race these athletes have had programmed at the CrossFit Games. Yes, there's a 200 meter run portion of this, but different than bike to work, right? You went out there, did 75 toes of our five laps around the course, only five miles. Had chest to bar, you had some breaks in here. This is constant. This is constant pedaling, constant pushing, up, down terrain, all these turns. It's gonna be, it's more physically draining than any bike test they've had at the CrossFit Games. It's Emma Lawson, Emily Rolf, and then about six riders behind them in a pack. Leaders on lap number three here. Rolf made a decent push on the run portion of the second lap. But we've seen every lead dissipate. 
after that 200 meter section. And Catherine Davis' daughter leads that pack. She was the leader on lap number two. Lawson, a former team champion, finished first in the 16 to 17 year old division at the CrossFit Games in 2021, and was third in the 14 to 15 year old division in 2019. She started CrossFit from when she was seven years old. I ran into a, a young fan yesterday, and she has some aspirations. I think you saw in the, the hotel room uh, or the uh, the hotel lobby as well. Eden, and, yeah, from it's, New Brunswick, uh, Eden. Canada. Yeah, it's exactly a fellow Canadian, and she had uh, you know games aspirations. And the only said is like, you got time, you got time. If that's your goal, great. But you know, someone like Emma Lawson just did it the right way. Slow, steady, decent progression. Great transition from Emma Lawson as she is now on the run portion of this third lap, Emily Rolf behind her. The one thing about this run portion, it is a decent part of this race, but the other part is that what it does is it disrupts the rhythm a little bit. You get used to your bike, used to the turns, and you start to settle in. When you have to hop on and off the bike, it's just that little wrinkle that Boz is throwing in there to disrupt the athlete's rhythm on and off the bike. Now that pack that is behind Lawson and Rolf, they are well into this run portion. And if you, if you watch Tour de France or any type of road race when it comes to cycling, the hardest thing you can do is break away by yourself. And what you'd like to hope to have is maybe two or three riders with you that you can collectively work together to get away from the pack. And if you can do that, if Emily and Emma can somehow work together they'll both benefit from that when it comes to drafting because when you've got 10 athletes in a pack even if they're not working together they're helping each other because of the ability not to have to pull that group the entire time by themselves so bethany flores is one of the last women to get on the bike there at, to close out that transition area who did extremely well in the cyclocross event that we had here. Ninth in 2017 in cycl cyclocross, fourth in 2018 in the crit. Another athlete, it's, it's I'm just saying, it's good to have her back. She you know, couldn't compete in 2021, uh, injured in 2022, and it's good to see her back in competition year 2023. Emma Lawson and Emily Rolf are ready to close out lap number three. Emma Lawson is the first athlete of any that took the lead that maintained it after the first two laps. Laurel Horvath leading lap one, fell behind the pack. Katrin davis Otter leading lap two, fell behind the pack. Emma Lawson is extending her lead. Not just the pack, but on second place, Emily Rolfe. That was Jamie Simmons, who sits in third ahead of Laurel Horvath. And it's Alexis Raptus on that number eight bike behind them on the outside. That's Karin Freova, the number nine bike. Well, I said the, the challenging part of leading by yourself. The other is if the, the chase pack does not know how to work together, they're at the mercy of the speed whoever's leading that pack. Because at this point, Emma Lawson has basically, we call it breaking the rubber band. And that's when you have this line of sight of someone you're chasing. So you're, you're somewhat emotionally or, or, or mentally tethered to them. I'm, I'm still within striking distance. I have that. She's snapped it. She hasn't snapped it on Emily Rolfe just yet. But she has broken contact with that lead pack. Now that lead pack is no longer pacing off Emma Lawson or Emily right Rolfe. They're pacing by whoever's leading that pack. And if whoever's leading that pack is not doing their job to run down Emma Lawson, Emma Lawson can now extend her lead without even even have to try that much. I mean, she's trying very hard, but it's pushing to get away from a pack. And back behind Emma Lawson, that pack, they are communicating with each other. And we've seen that before in bike races here, where 
athletes start to work together, whether it's drafting in, in the crit a couple years ago, <laughs> well, and now you know, <laughs> figuring out who's going to try to push the pace here. Communicating in the crit a few years ago was more like, get your butt up here <laughs> and lead the pack. So it depends on what the communication actually is. Past the halfway point before that gate will close at the 40 minute mark. And Emma Lawson continues to lead here. Grab that lead in lap three. And here in lap four is looking to build on it. Emily Rolfe is the only woman who is within striking distance of her right now. And what's nice here on the switchbacks for Emma Lawson is that she can see how her lead is. You, you start to get familiar with the course. Okay, every time I get to this turn, this is where my chase athlete is. This is where the pack is. Okay, now, okay, I haven't lost any ground. I'm in a good pace right now. Oh, it's starting to catch me. Maybe you need to turn it up a little bit. For more on Emma, let's go down to the course. That's where Nikki Brazier is. competition and she actually told me that she was most looking forward to this bike event. She said she really enjoyed the bike implement last year and so she was happy to see it back again. Now her personal goal for this season is to, to really just execute each test with the best effort that she possibly can and leave the competition with absolutely no regrets while having fun which she said is a little bit tough given all the pressure coming off of last season. I was able to talk with Emma Lawson in the weeks leading up to this and you know, asked her about what it was like to wear the, the leader's jersey last year when she said she had no expectations and, mm -hmm. and it, it said it didn't seem real. And it definitely validated for her the fact that she belonged with the world's best. Well, I mean, how many times have you seen someone wear the leader jersey for the last six years previous to that? Then Tia Toomey. Mm -hmm. Rarely was she ever out of that jersey. So almost to be wearing someone else's, right. <laughs> what you would consider uniform in the competition is probably a surreal feeling indeed. Yeah, one of the easiest jobs the past you know, six years here in Madison has been printing the leader's jersey because you just got to put Toomey's name on it and it's call it a day. <laughs> yeah. Emma Lawson is all by herself. In the background, you can see the pack behind Emily Roth and Emma Carey. Was that Emma, Emma Carey? That is, is Emma that Carey. Emma Lawson is possibly going to lap Emma Carey. We showed you earlier Emma Carey involved in a wreck that saw her go over one of the barriers. Let's we'll send it down to Mike Arsenault. Yeah, Sean, as you mentioned, uh, Emma Carey had the difficulty earlier in this test, and we mentioned off the top, would we see athletes lap other athletes? That's exactly what we're going to about to see right here on this lap because Emma Carey and Emma Lawson are both on this transition, and Emma Carey, since she fell, has not looked comfortable on this bike in this test whatsoever. So we're going to see Emma Lawson catch Emma Carey, two of our youngest stars in CrossFit, uh, very shortly here, potentially by the end of this lap. And there is Emma Carey, who is... Still on her third lap. You know, it's a good sign for Emma Lawson is just one handing the bike. A lot of times you'll see people hold two hands when they start to get fatigued, almost like a little bit of a crutch. But he got that one hand. That's a, that's a, that's a little bit of a swagger hold when, when it comes to running with the bike. Same thing for Emily Rolf. Doesn't give up really any ground to Emily Rolf, who is now solidly in second place. And now here comes the pack. And one thing with the transitions here, Sean, is that you don't want to just hop on the seat when you get over this barrier. You want to run with it and get some momentum. That is Emma Tall, who is now in third place leading that pack, as Catherine Davis' daughter is going to be the fourth woman onto her bike. And there is Jamie Simmons. Third place in the fourth place pack, moving to 28. Jamie Simmons. Making her first individual appearance here at the CrossFit Games since 2020. When she took 12th, she has stood on the podium here as an individual. In 2019, Simmons finished third place overall. David's daughter. Jamie's had some decent finishes in bike events here in Madison. Emma Tall ahead of David's daughter. So Emma Tall, I believe that was Emma Tall. And then David's daughter in fourth. Emma Tall ahead of David's daughter.
You start, I mean, got about 13 minutes left here, Sean, and so you start to look at body language, breathing, how, the, uh, how relaxed are they? Emma Lawson looks very relaxed. Look how comfortable she is. Some of the people in the backpack are laboring. I just, you know, just talked to Chris Henshaw. He's out there on the course watching these athletes. And there are some of these athletes, he says, look like they're on the verge of hyperventilation. And I don't think sometimes people understand is that how much cycling, racing in particular, will just suck the absolute life out of you. And a big reason is that because your main movers are the quads, the glutes, the hamstrings. Those things suck up oxygen out of your body faster than any muscle group because it's the largest one that you have and the main one that you're using. So if you start too fast here, there is really no time to recover on the on this course other than to just drop back and go slower. Approaching the 28 minute mark. You can schedule a no cost 15 minute evaluation to find out if a Rosti treatment is right for you. Get pain free. Now available across the US. You can scan the QR code to get started. Emma Lawson looking for her first career test win as an individual here at the CrossFit Games. Her best finish prior to this, three third places last year. Look at that. Just how far she's out of that. And that again, that's that's racing here in the CrossFit realm of just understanding the in-race strategy when working with other athletes that these athletes just don't have the experience with. Lawson on lap number five. Emily Rolf sits in second. Behind Rolf, when we last checked in, it was Emma Tall, Karim Freova. An athlete in that pack, I don't think we, we mentioned or saw, is Gabby McGowan. And after the first lap, she was in 17. Second lap moved up to 10. Third lap moved up to seven. Just keep an eye on you know, she can continue that trend, just slowly moving herself through the course. Ten minutes is a long time on the bike. Still opportunities to make a move. And there are your top three on their fifth lap. A tough spot, obviously, Emma Lawson in the back part of your screen. She's, you know, you got that leader energy trying not to get caught. The, the toughest one is probably Emily Rolf on that second mid-turn. She's just kind of in no man's land, a little bit of bike purgatory, so to speak, is that, okay, I, I can't quite catch her. I, I'm, I'm slowly getting caught here. That's a tough spot to be in. Less than 10 minutes to go before that gate will close. And then we will have one final race to the finish. Bikes have been a regular occurring implement here at the CrossFit Games. We first saw them way back in 2012 at Pendleton. Oh, Pendleton. A day that lasted 73 <laughs> hours if you were there. <laughs> the next time we saw him was in cyclocross here in Madison. The second year, or sorry, pardon me, the first year we were here in Madison. And then we did road bikes with the crit. Morgan Hill, California. In 2020, we had the bike repeater. And then last year, a bike to work. You're talking about lap splits and how we're, we're we're looking at our time and averaging about 6:45 to seven minutes. So for Emma Lawson, it's going to be hugely important on this coming lap, as we're right about the 31 minute mark. She may be hitting that lap gate time about 33. This next lap is going to be the most important lap for her because she could have the potential to be maybe the only person to get an extra lap done if she can race 
basically put the pedal down, no pun intended, to get an extra lap, timing-wise. Lawson back on her bike. Here comes Emily Rolf around the corner. Rolf has two test wins in her career at the CrossFit Games. Won the Ruck in 2019 and then Event 10 in 2021. And Rolf is slowly getting caught by that chasing pack. And this is the battle for third. Bethany Flores now moving up ahead of David's daughter. Emma Tall is there. And Gabby Magawa on the number one bike. So she continues to move up. Jamie Simmons has been a fixture in this lead pack. I wouldn't be surprised if this chase pack catches Emily Rolfe in this next lap just because they're slowly catching the distance. She's, she's tethered to them a bit more. She's in within striking distance. Alexis Raptus is back there on the number eight bike as well. Now this test is presented by O2 Hydration, the official sports drink of the 2023 Florida, Noble CrossFit Games. You can find O2 online at drinko2.com and at CrossFit Gyms nationwide and hydrate like you mean it. Hey, Emma Lawson's lap time was at the 32.29 mark. So that's seven and a half minutes to get an extra lap. Her last split time for her previous lap was right around 6.37 or 6.35. So she can do that pace again. She will get past that lap gate close by 30 seconds. The chase pack is 30 to 40 seconds behind her. Why is that important? Because they may not be able to make the gate at the 40 minute mark if they don't increase their speed. Right now, they're behind that pace. So as I said, Emma Lawson is in a position to be the only person to maybe get an extra lap after this lap. Number 39 bike listed as Alexia Williams. She just got lapped by Emma Lawson. Lawson on her sixth lap here. Less than six minutes to go. And Lawson is at 32.29 at the time check. Rolf was at 32.51. It's about 22 seconds behind her. The chase pack, 33.04, 33.05. So again, 30 seconds, 30 to 35 seconds behind Emma Lawson but they could be gaining speed because now they see Emily Roth. And like I said before, is that unless they're tethered, they can see the person they're trying to chase. They're at the mercy of their own pace. They can't pace off anyone. Right now, it's looking like a handful of athletes will get through the gate at that 40 minute mark. Still have yet to see. There he is, em Emily Roth there, there in the background. You can see her just passing it out the top of, the top of your screen. Continues to sit in second place. Emma Lawson grabbed this lead on the third lap and has continued to build on it as Bethany Flores has now moved into third place. Four minutes until that time gate closes. And that, that again, that chase pack is right there on the second. So that scenario of a potential cluster of athletes within seconds of the gate closing, depending on how they navigate that, the, the, the game's team could be right there on that cut line to get an extra lap. And that's another opportunity. That's another six to seven minutes they have to potentially reel in Lawson. So this is the, the most important lap for these top seven athletes.
Emma Lawson third last year in bike to work. And getting closer to her first career test win here as an individual at the CrossFit Games. Less than three minutes to go. Transition area coming up for Emma Lawson. And Lawson's going to make the gate, but that pack in the top left corner of your screen, they have to make this cut. They have to, they have to. Otherwise, I mean, otherwise they don't get an extra lap, but an extra lap, like I said, is a Massive opportunity to work together to chase down Lawson because Lawson has been flying solo for almost the last 30 minutes by herself, working by herself, pushing on her own. But to have a chase pack with the potential to catch her is huge. Here comes Emily Rolf, and now that pack behind Rolf hopping off their bikes. I say Rolf has done a great job on this lap, actually. She is. She has extended her lead slightly on the chase group. The battle for third is Catherine Davis' daughter and Bethany Flores are towards the front. Emma Tall's right behind them. Lawson back on the bike. She's got less than 90 seconds to go to make that gate. Shouldn't be a problem. Here comes Emily Rolf. She should get through as well. Bethany Flores, who is back in front of that pack. Gabby Magawa. There she comes. Continues to creep up. Got one minute to get to the gate. Alexis Raptus is on the bike ahead of Flores. Third to 28. Davis ought to try to move up there in the back as well. And Jamie Simmons on the left side of your screen. So less than now 40 seconds to go before the gate closes. But look how hard they're pushing to just make the gate. 30 seconds left in. Torres, Davis, Sutter, Magala, Paul, Simmons. We'll be able to move into another lap. All right, they all make the gate. But now look at them. <laughs> OK, there's one thing to make the gate, but what you had to do to, to get there. And that's another pace apart of being in the chase group. If you're in the lead by that much, you dictate your own pace. They'll have to spend so much energy just to make the time cut. That might have been too much for them to have enough to chase down Lawson in this final lap. Got another couple women get through. And now the gate has closed. And you can see the event staff on the field will now be waving the riders in. Their test is done. The last ones to squeak through the gate looks like Forrest Otter Lowen just squeezed in. So we have, I think it looks like 11 athletes made the gate. And one we did not see, Laura Horvath, who was the leader early on in this test. I think Horvath did squeak in there. Oh, yeah, good job. Horvath may still be alive. The 11 women got through. This Paige Powers is going to exit the course. So their laps, though, will all be, say, a specific uh, the lap six or seven. They'll all get seven laps, but their tiebreaker is their time crossing that finish line at the gate. That's how they're going to separate the field. It's a race to the finish regardless, but the number of laps separate the field, but the time it takes them to complete is the main goal. Emma Lawson's fans cheering her through this final lap as she looks to bring home her first 
test win here and lock up 100 points to kick off her 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. And we'll try to keep an eye on the battle that is ensuing behind her. Again, nice getting out of the turn, getting on the line of sight of that chase group. Well, Emma Tall has now passed Emily Rolf for second. There's Catherine Davis' daughter who sits in fourth. So as you mentioned, getting to the gate was huge for that pack. Is that a, an extra, not an extra lap, an extra near seven minutes of opportunity to move yourself up in this group. Lawson, Tall, Rolf, and David Zotter, your top four right now. Lawson has led since the third lap. They are on lap seven right now, are the leaders, the women who made it through that gate. Just so impressive what Lawson has done since that third lap. All by herself, it's so hard to do. portion of this lap is coming up as Lawson's looking to lap even more riders. And Lawson off the bike for the final time. is off along with Emily Rolf in the background there. That group is so tight. This run is going to be a factor. Fisa Goffey is the woman who's about to get lapped by Lawson. Emma Tall is now just ahead of Emily Rolf. Lawson is done, back on the bike for the final time. Lawson trying to pick up the pace now and get across the finish line and close things out. So Emma Lawson. Her first career test win, 100 points, as she wins ride. And now Emily Rolf back in front of Emma Tall. So Rolf is going to finish in second, and Tall will take third. Catherine David's daughter is in. And I believe that's Alexis Raptus next to her. We had another athlete in there. Here comes Jamie Simmons is across. We'll have to wait for the official results as we weren't able to tell who got across after David's daughter. There is Emma Lawson who will be wearing the leader's jersey as we head to the North Park for the second test later today. 
It looked like maybe Lawson, as soon as that was over, just came off the bike immediately. Well, here's Laura Horvath, who did make it through the gate, obviously. So she'll get a top 10 finish. Great start for her. There's Karin Freyova. Great effort from Emma Lawson, who was in the lead pack towards the beginning as Laura Horvath got out front. But then lap three, and it was over. Yeah, lead pack looked like the kiss of death for the first two laps. It was Laura Horvath fell by catching Davis' daughter, but Emma Lawson made her move on the third transition and never looked back. Slowly extended her lead from lap to lap to lap. And then at the end, just by herself the entire time. Got through the final lap, gate closed. The other group was trying to chase her down. It was Emily Rawl solo for a while. But the, the work that Lawson put in to do this, watch, she comes off her bike immediately. Everyone else rode off and then had to come down and take a break. 100 points for Emma Lawson as she picks up her first career test win. And let's go to Nikki Brazier, who is with your test winner. Right. We're taking a little bit of a, a seated approach here because Emma, you look like you're, I see you pouring some water on your legs. What's going on with your muscles in your body right now? I'm cramping. <laughs> yeah, I probably should have had more sodium before this event. But yeah, on uh, my third final lap, my legs started cramping and I thought I was gonna lose it all. <laughs> it was a panicked moment, but I just pedaled through it. Eventually it went away, came back on the run, but <laughs> <laughs> got to do what you got to do, right? Totally. Now, you were able to pull ahead relatively early and, and stay ahead, making a really wide gap. Sometimes it's it's almost harder to stay ahead when you have no one on your left and right really pushing you. So how were you mentally able to push through that? Yeah, it's kind of one of those things you kind of just got to take a chance. I took a chance to start out on the front, um, and it worked out for me this time. doesn't always, but yeah, I was just really trying to push the pace, be aware of where everybody was. So. What does it do for you to start out the games weekend with a win like this? Uh, I mean, it definitely helps my confidence going into the rest of the weekend. But then again, it's only the first event out of many. So it doesn't really on to the next event. So yeah. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Emma Lawson, her first career test win here at the CrossFit Games. The women are done. The men coming up next to so stay with us here, everybody, at the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games.
we talk a lot about community with CrossFit. I think for a lot of people, their first introduction to the community is inside their affiliate, where they build relationships with people, they sweat together, they suffer together, and they build, in many cases, lifelong friendships. The community exists uh, in events like this, um, and coming together, I think, is really important, where you get all of these different essential and important parts of the community, what makes CrossFit so special, come together and uh, create this incredibly magical experience. So you walk in a, around an event like the semis, and obviously we see these incredible athletes on the floor um, showing us what's possible, uh, uh, inspiring so many people to, to get involved with CrossFit to give it a chance. You see uh, the coaches who are there, who, you know, without whom uh, these life-changing results for these great athletes, but also members of the community wouldn't be possible. There's the affiliate owners, how many of our athletes, members of our community, their journey starts in their local affiliate with that owner and their coaches who are willing to invest the time and the energy uh, to help change people's lives. Uh, it's the volunteers, you know, men and women behind the scenes who are coming together to put on this extraordinarily complicated and incredible event um, that is so inspiring for so many people. Uh, and there's us at CrossFit at headquarters, um, hopefully playing a role in, in bringing all those amazing parts of the community together uh, in a celebration of CrossFit. And without all of those individual parts working in harmony, sometimes with a little tension, that's part of what makes it interesting, none of this happens. And so these events are such an amazing reminder of uh, a manifestation of the community that exists outside the affiliate that brings those 14,000 gyms that we have changing lives all around the world together in a moment of celebration. First day of competition at the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games continues here as the men are set to take a leisurely ride in Madison, Wisconsin. I'm Sean Woodland with Chase Ingram. Nikki Brazier and Mike Arsenault are down on the competition floor. And for the second straight year, we start on the bikes. Individual test number one. And what we just saw the, the women take on is that this is going to be a beating of a test, especially if you start too fast. 40 minutes on the course for max laps, but it's still a race to the finish for time between these athletes. That yellow portion is where the athletes will have to hop off their bikes and run about 200 meters. The recipe for success delivered by Trifecta. Confidence on the bike. Are you comfortable? Are you confident? But uh, confidence in the turns. We have a lot of switchbacks on their course. 22 total twists and turns. Can you take these turns and take advantage of those opportunities? Mike Arsenault and Nikki Brazier are patrolling the course here at the Alliant Energy Center. Let's send it down to them. We start with Mike Arsenault. Thank you, Sean. It's less than 10% of the entirety of this test, but this run transition is punching way above its weight in terms of pain being delivered to these athletes. I saw Emma Lawson, who won the test for the women, smashing on her quads once she got back onto her bike. For the men to succeed here in this test, it will be who can manage the lower body fatigue the best that will end up on top. For how these athletes will finish this test, let's send it over to Nikki Brazier. Thank you, Mike. We will see the same cutoff here for the men as we saw for the women. The pylons behind me will come out here at the 40 minute mark and create a gate. The athletes who make it through the gate will have the opportunity to race for the finish and the first one there wins. The athletes who don't make it will be pulled off the course. For the women, we saw about 10 of them get through. We'll see how many men make it. Just like the women, all 40 men will be out on the course. Two rows of 20 to start with the higher ranked athletes in the front and towards the middle. So Pat Vellner, he'll be riding the number one bike and he has a little bit of a history with slow starts. Last year uh, in bike to work, he finished 20th and then back in 2018 and the crit had a mechanical with his bike that forced him towards the pack, his back of the pack as well. Hey, look, he just has day one, test one woes. He's got a 36th, a 35th, a 35th, and a 20th. That 35th place finish in 2021 effectively was the reason why he didn't win the 2021 games. He's got third twice, second twice. People think that this is his year. This is one of the most important tests for the entire weekend for Pat Vellner. We are underway. 
Same thing we had for the women as a rolling start. Competition director Adrian Bosman in the red shirt in the lead will start them off and then the race will begin. So Boz and the red will pull off to the side and they'll let the athletes basically get under their way as fast as they can. Well, Yona Koski there on the right side of your screen. Out front early. Yona Koski is one of the most popular picks to win this test. Koski in bike events for, for, for a first test has gotten third and second. He got third in cycle cross, second in bike to work last year. He had missed in 2018 when they had the crit. But on the flip side is that. Ooh, that's Alex Vino almost wiping out there. Well, we saw how dangerous that first turn was when you have a field of 40 that would happen to Emma Carey in the first heat. But, but back to Koski, this guy just has almost the opposite of Vellner. He has great first events here at the CrossFit Games. Usually there's a mass start, there may be a swim involved, but even with the bike, Koski is one of the best, <laughs> basically, first test athletes you've ever had. Three of his test wins, one of them, event one, 2021, the ocean, the ocean swim in 2016 was towards the front, and then pier paddle in 2015, that was another opening event. And we saw on the women's side is that for the first two laps, if you were in the lead, you were no longer in the lead after the first lap as we saw some athletes maybe come out a little too hot. Sean, one advantage here for the men is that now they have a better idea of about how many laps are on the table. Whereas versus the women, they really weren't sure. They, they had a lap test earlier. They thought it would take about six to seven minutes on average for a lap test. But now men know it's like, listen, I got to get seven laps in. So now it's seven laps for time versus 40 minutes of riding out here on the course. Fabian Benito is your leader right now as we're past the two minute mark. His timing is presented by G Shock, the official watch of the Noble CrossFit Games. So much tighter here towards the front than it was for the women and their opening lap, but we're only two and a half minutes in. Opening lap, the really only thing you can do in the opening lap of these 40 minutes is screw it up. You can either go out too fast, you could crash into somebody, you could derail your bike. Just let this opening lap come to you. Get a feel for the course. It's a different day than what they had on the training ride. They are more isolated, 40-person field. And at the same time, is maybe give yourself a lap to calm down. Fabian Benito is out in the lead. He's a rookie at the CrossFit Games. He's been fighting for years to get here. Is this a wheelhouse test for him? Or is this the rookie jitters and adrenaline? I see Yonikoski talking to them together, maybe trying to work with Adler and Benito. And there's Cole Sager, who's making his 10th straight appearance here at the CrossFit Games. Grover Carl Gubinson and Noah Olsen are the other two men who are doing that here this year. Let's send it out to Mike Arsenault, who's down there on the course. Thank you, Sean Chase. You alluded to Pat Vellner's struggle, so I had a chance to talk to his coach, Michelle Latondra, about the message for this test, and she said, the turns will get better with each and every lap, so it's all about maintaining a good position in the first half and keeping the effort manageable and then pushing to have a great last lap. To put it more succinctly, she said, and I quote, don't be an idiot in the first 25 minutes. <laughs> That's uh, for, for Pat. That's good quality direct coaching. Now, Yonikowski in front of Jeffrey Adler. As Benito is sitting back in third now. Men approaching that run portion of this opening lap. Opening lap times for the women were a range of 626 in that main pack about 646. So again, very tight laps. Let's see how fast the men are coming into this first one. It's Adler and Koski out front. Adler slightly ahead of Koski. And just talk about Jeff Adler for a second is that guy came in as basically the strong guy the strong kid of the group. And he has worked on his endurance and his skills maniacally 
over the last three years, and it is showing by his place finishes on the leaderboard. Fifth place last year is his best finish at the CrossFit Games ever with a full field. He's one of those athletes that is is in the mentioning of possibly being you know, on the podium and maybe win the CrossFit Games this year. That's Bailey Martin who is in third place. Martin out of New Zealand. Making his second appearance here at the CrossFit Games. His first as an individual. He actually competed as a team back in 2017, where he took 13th overall. Well, here are your two leaders, Jeff Adler and Yonikoski, wrapping up lap number one. Now, with him talking to each other, you can hear Koski or look at Koski talking to Jeff. Jeff is chirping back, and that's that's the discussion of we talked about the women is like, can we work together? Can we work together to get ahead of this pack? as Adler and Koski are right about 5.44, 5.45. Bjorben Carl Gumanson now is in third place ahead of Bailey Martin, who sits in fourth. And Cole Sager rounds out the top five after lap number one. So not that you can maintain the you know lap one pace for the entire 40 minutes, but that's a six minute lap. Say you keep that pace, you're looking at about 36 minutes to keep that. Seven laps is probably the most we're gonna see some athletes get. So understanding is like, listen, it's six laps to get to that final cut line before they basically the time gate closes. So now it's six laps for time with the seventh one to finish. So now they have something that they are chasing. They have a a set amount of work that they're racing to do, and that's much easier to tackle than an arbitrary lap number in a 40-minute time span. Koski taking a look back, and Roman Krenikov now on the number four bike has moved into third. Jordan Carl Gubins is still in that lead pack. Number 31 is Spencer Panchik. And now here is the two-time defending champ, Justin Medeiros, rounding the corner. You're all right, Sam. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Recover. Recover. Now that first lap, Velmer, Velner's third, sitting in 32nd. Now it's a, just a mass of bodies when it comes to that, but it's still towards the back of the pack. Roman Krenikov is starting to creep up. As he sits in third, Jorben Carl Gumanson is right behind him. Come on, Jeff! Jay Crouch up there as well. Jay Crouch actually has a little, some motocross background. Now, obviously, you're not pedaling. There's not that physical element. But as we said in the, the recipes per success, it's it's the competence. Competence racing on a bike. Confidence turn, racing in these turns. So Jay Crouch having some of that racing experience on a bike to help navigate how he attacks this course. Koski's ahead of Adler right now for the lead with Krenikov in third, and I believe that is Jorgen Carl Gubinson sitting in fourth ahead of Jay Crouch. See Koski pulling back on purpose to sit back on now Krenikov's wheel. Now Krenikov is going to try to pass Adler on this turn. And Krenikov has moved into the lead. And it almost biffed it there on the turn. Coming in a little too tight on these switchbacks on the back side of this course. Well, we were talking earlier about the course you know, before we came on air here. And you made a really good point about the turns are really the best opportunity that people will have to pass other riders. It, and that's because there's not a big straightaway on flat ground to outrace anyone on the course. But it's the technical aspect of these turns. There's 22 total turns on the course. 15 of them 
are a 180 turn. And what you can do is that if you have the technical proficiency to have a good line in a good race, you can actually gain a second on somebody without even having to pedal. Well, if you do that 15 times, that's 15 seconds a lap. Someone else is going to have to bike faster and harder than you to try to catch you. And now the leaders are off for the second time. A moment to go. That lead pack working together. There's Yonikowski looking over his shoulder and allows Adler and Krennikov go, to pass. And Nato and his eye was so curious if we were going to see that. And this is a lesson learned from last year, is that last year, the athletes didn't talk to each other. They basically all just tried to race each other singled up. Did they learn? Did they adapt? One of the main things you see from CrossFit athletes is their ability to adapt event to event but year to year as well. So if we can see these athletes communicate and pull away from the rest of the field, that's that maturation in competition we see from one year to the next. Krennikov, Crouch, Adler, and Koski towards the front. Cole Sager, you saw him getting ready to get back on the bike. And now it's Roman Krennikov ahead of Crouch, Koski, Adler, and then Bjorven Carl Gumanson doing what he does, just hanging out there inside the top five. Schedule a no-cost 15-minute evaluation to find out if a Rosti treatment is right for you. Get pain-free. Now available across the U.S. You can scan the QR code to get started. The lap two is down for the leaders. 11.37, Karenikov in the lead. He had a 5.45 split on the first lap. So he actually increased his speed on the second one. Jay Crouch has now moved in front of Roman Krennikov. Yonikowski behind Roman. And it's Adler in fourth, Bjorn Carl Gubinson in fifth. And if you have a pace lead group working together, this is exactly what you should see. We shouldn't see one person in the lead the entire time. You stay in this line, you ride wheel to wheel to wheel. Listen, let's just separate ourselves from the other 35 athletes. And on the last lap, we all agree that the gloves are off and we're going to race to the finish line. But each person, 20 seconds max pulling in the front. Everybody else gets a break as Roma Krennikov moves back in the front. The top five have separated themselves here and everyone content to draft behind Roman Krennikov, one of the bigger athletes out there. Third lap here for just about everybody now on the course. Say, why is drafting important? This is one, it helps conserve energy. Not the person in the front. They're taking all the headwind, they're taking all the pace, but if you get within a foot of the other rider, it's anywhere between 15 to 40% energy saved while moving at the same speed. And so if you can just, with, especially with a group of five, how, how valuable it is to be in a large lead group. Hey, I'm gonna sit at the front for 20 seconds and then just work to the back. And then for the next minute and a half, I'm going to conserve 40% of my energy and keep the same speed. That's what working together at the front chase pack is, is for. And we mentioned Velder at the start. He's towards the back here. Along with Jack Farlow and Will Morad. I said after the first lap, he was in 30 seconds. Looks like he's still in that pace, about 616 on the first lap. Looks like 6.05 on the second, so not getting slower, but neither is the rest of the field. And look at the lead this front five have. Now, still a lot of time left, 25 minutes left in the first test. And you see front lead bike. <laughs> Backing off the pace a little bit, but what you don't want is that you don't want 
the group to ride your coattails. You're in the lead. You can extend this. Work together. Roman Krennikov, Yonikoski, Alex Vino, Bjorn Carl Gumanson, and Jay Crouch. Oh, that's Jeff Adler, not Alex Vino. there in the lead pack. Adler has been towards the top. See Roman leading in the front. It was Koski for a bit, but not much. Roman jumped right in front again fairly quickly. But if you want to see what, what drafting does is Roman's pedaling hard, and you'll see some of the athletes just stop pedaling. Jay Kraut, stop pedaling. Goodmanson, stop pedaling. But it's because that's the benefit of the draft, and the draft gets better the more people you have in line. Right now it's Roman Krennikov who is staying out front. Krennikov made his first in-person appearance at the CrossFit Games last year, finished on the podium in second place. And he won two tests last year. That's three career test wins. The other coming in the 1,000-meter row test from 2020. That was the online portion of the CrossFit Games that year. Athlete that is in the mix of not just podiuming again, but winning the entire theme. He got second last year in what, at minimum, you could say was a tumultuous year for Roman Karenikov, trying to get a visa to come to the United States for the first time ever. Just had a baby boy, left his wife back home to come to the States just to compete here, and then got to meet him for the first time ever at the CrossFit Games last year. Now, he's got to spend an entire year here in the United States training just for this. Let's bring in Mike Arsenault down on the course. Well, Chase, we've been talking about how difficult the run is on these athletes, both the women and the men, and how brutal it is on their quads and their glutes. So is it a matter of just grinning and bearing it, or is there something these athletes can do technique-wise to make it a little bit easier? Is that going harder on the decline, easing off the pedal on the incline, or what would you advise they should do to push through on these run portions? The, the one part is, like, take your break on the declines. That, that's a good opportunity to keep your speed but not keep the same intensity. But we said earlier, it's the technicality of the turns, especially the ones that have an incline at the base of the turn. That's where you gain a second, maybe two seconds on the rest of the pack. Jay Crouch has now moved out front. Seventeen thirty to the collective time. The lap time previously was eleven thirty nine. So that third lap was faster than the second one. Their fastest lap so far is five forty four. They bumped up to about five fifty five and now brought it down to about five fifty for that lap. Jay Crouch leading the front five. You don't want to lose contact. You, like I said, is you get 15 to 40 percent benefit on the draft. You lose contact with about 10 to 10 feet away, which is not a lot of distance. It's going to be hard to make up, especially when four are pulling together, not you. And Jay Crouch making his fourth straight individual appearance here at the CrossFit Games. His best finish was 18th overall in 2020, and his best finish in a test is fifth. He's done that twice. Damn Diane in 2020, and then event four in 2021. And now Yonikoski back in front. Koski making his ninth career appearance at the CrossFit Games. His best finish came in 2021 when he finished sixth overall. A yeah, little distance in these front five. Koski and Crouch are starting to pull away. Mm -hmm. 
Kokoski and Crouch continue to lead. There is Justin Medeiros on the number 10 bike behind Chandler Smith. Lazar Jukic is behind Medeiros. Justin has used consistency to win his two titles. He only has won one test at the CrossFit Games, but he rarely makes mistakes. In 48 total career tests at the Games, he's finished in the top 10 39 times. Uh, and that's it. Consistency is key. That's that's. I mean, that's the baseline methodology deciding piece of, of a CrossFit athlete is how consistent can you be across the board. But Medeiros, he's looking a little gas. If you just saw his body language gasping for air, we're just past the halfway point here. Jay Crouch and Yonikoski have separated themselves from Adler, Gumitson, and Krenikov. Koski's leading Crouch. And now, again, we'll see if this is a move to help the tandem. There you go. But there's obviously more is better when it comes to drafting, but if the group isn't collectively working together, find, your, find yourself someone who's willing to work with you. And that might be what we're seeing with Koski and Crouch. Krenikov now in third place in that pack on the right side of your screen. Posty taking a second to grab some water. Trek bike specs has 12 speeds. He's it's got 12 speeds. Take it off any sweet jumps. <laughs> send, down, send it down to Nikki Brazier with more on that bike. Yeah, guys, I was able to catch up with Chris Hinshaw, who actually did a couple laps in practice on this course, and he told me that, in his opinion, that Trek bike is legit. It felt as though he was riding with a strong tailwind the entire time, and the tires have been filled at a pretty high pressure, which makes traveling over the grass, now very well mounted down, pretty darn fast, which should benefit the more aggressive rider. And he said, unfortunately, this tire pressure also makes riding on the gravel and the dirt a little more squirrely, so the safest area is going to be right in the middle, right down the dirt, as the uh, sides of the track here are where some of the larger rocks have been gathered. Koski and Crouch getting set to close out their fourth lap. And 40 minutes is when that gate will close, and whoever gets past that will race to the finish. There's Jordan Paul Gumanson. Fifth place right now in this test. Gumanson making his 10th straight appearance here at the CrossFit Games. He has only finished lower than ninth overall once, and that was his rookie year in 2014. It's Koski. Koski now your new leader with Crouch taking second, Adler third, Krenikov fourth, BK G in fifth, so that first place position. Lap five now for the leaders. Less than 17 minutes before we hit that 40 minute mark. And that might be Jeff Adler trying to work his way up into your lead pack. He was stuck in the back three once that lead pack split. And that is Jeff Adler. We're talking to him and his coach, Carolyn Lambre. A few months ago, they mentioned that Jeff's training has changed. The focus is no longer let's get to the CrossFit Games and be competitive. It's now let's get to the CrossFit Games and win. There's Jake Douglas, rookie out of Australia. And it's not too early to mention, Sean, is the value of single place finishes when it comes to point allocation. Because this is potentially going to be, with the talent that we have at the top, one of the closer games finishes. Hard to predict in test one over the course of the weekend, but with the talent that we have at the top, these two or three place finishes, those 10, 8 to 12 point swings from test to test 
are going to be so valuable. But then on the horizon, after Friday, we're cutting 10 people. And there's some events that are coming on Saturday that maybe those bottom 10 could succeed in and maybe make that final cut to 20. Jake Douglas being one of those athletes. Koski, Crouch, and Adler, your top three right now on their fifth lap. Prenikov leading Jorgen Carl Gubitschen for fourth right now. Now it's Adler who has moved into the lead. Adler has finished inside the top five twice in his career at the CrossFit Games, did it in 2020, and then again last year. That's four career test wins. Those mainly coming in strength power tests. Back nine last year is one of the more impressive things I have seen anyone do. Roman and BKG in the back, still sticking around. Koski is really doing a nice job of drafting off the people in front of him. And, and it looks like, I mean, since the beginning that not only is he doing a good job navigating through that, but a good job almost coaching the group to a certain extent. And that's what you need. You need everyone to work collectively together if you are going to try to work in that position. But maybe have someone in charge of just directing the trio that you have. You see how far ahead the five riders are of the pack. We talked about that in the, the women's test previously with, with Emma Lawson is that you get to a certain point out of eyesight that you just break the spirit of the people chasing you. They're, oh, they're too far. I'm not even going to worry about it. Or I don't know how fast that group is going. I have no depth to gauge if I'm catching up or losing ground. So they're kind of lost in their own pacing on the course. will be the first man to hop off his bike and complete this approximately 200 meter run. This is not the first time we have seen bikes at the CrossFit Games. The first time was back in 2012. Pendleton won and those bikes were single speed. <laughs> yeah. Didn't see him again until we came here to Madison in 2017 with Cyclocross. We had the road bikes in the crit in 2018. The bike repeater showed up in 2020 out in Morgan Hill, California, and then last year we had bike to work. And of the five athletes in this group, Yonikoski has competed in two of those. Cycle cross, he got third in 2017. Last year, second in bike to work. Could have won the thing, but I don't think he realized that Ricky Garrard even existed on the bike course <laughs> in test one last year. Let's go down to Mike Arsenault. Well, Jeff Adler is from Montreal, and for those of you not as familiar with Canadian geography as I am, Montreal is actually built on a hill, Mount Royal, and Jeff has done a number of uh, bike training sessions up and down Mount, Mount Royal, uh, over 200 meters of elevation, nearly 800 feet. So obviously, obviously those training sessions definitely paying off here in test number one. And here comes our top five. And, and Adler will be the first man across. Just ahead of Koski and Crouch. Now five laps are down for the leaders. One lap. it's About 10 and a half minutes before that gate will close and we will have that final race of the finish. Brennikoff and Gubitson have managed to now close the gap as well as those five riders are tired as tired. Oh. 
two minutes to complete. And we tag in our second pair of male-female athletes. Roman Krennikov moving back from the front. Adler, Crouch, Koski, and Bjorben Carl Gumanson. Well, Justin Medeiros is still back in the pack. Your two-time defending champion. Not quite sure where he is in relation to the rest of the field, but we'll be keeping an eye on him. It's right there around 17. And there's Pat Velder on the right with Will Morad. Ant Haynes. As it stands right now, Vellner is outside the top 30. And we talked at the beginning is how important it is to just get some points when it comes to trying to podium or win the CrossFit Games, but how valuable or how necessary it is for Vellner to have a good start to the weekend. Pat Felder's no stranger to climbing out of early holes, and it's looking like he's going to have good to do it again here. Top five now lapping another rider out there. This test is presented by O2 Hydration, the official sports drink of the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. Find O2 online at drinko2.com and at CrossFit Gyms nationwide and hydrate like you mean it. Now, eight minutes left before the gate closes. And it's Roman Krennikov in front of Jeff Adler and Jay Crouch. Yonikowski sits in fourth, followed by Bjorben Carl Gumanson. Finish time in the last lap of this lead group was right about on the nose six minutes. Earlier, previous to that, they've all been sub six. So that was the slowest lap they've had being the fifth lap, which is no surprise. I mean, to, to speed up constantly through 40 minutes at this intensity of which these athletes are riding at is, is not feasible. But six minutes here, if they can get past the gate, which they will in, in plenty of time, and, and you know, we predicted maybe somewhere around 36 to 37 minutes. But the pack behind them, they may, the majority of them all may make the final lap. So then it's, again, as he said, and that last, you know, lap itself is just a race to the finish line. Look at Yona Kosky. This is the benefit of being in the back of the pack. You're not losing any ground. Take your feet off the pedals, flush out your legs a little bit. Your feet aren't clipped in, so that's one benefit of not having clips is you can just take your feet out and shake it without having to snap back in. The downside is that you don't actually get that full pull of being clipped into a pedal, but these athletes are used to that. There's just no one within sight other than the athlete that was just lapped of these top five. Now to the run portion. Lap splits for these group. 544, 554, 551, 549, and then a six minute lap on the fifth one. That gate will close at 40 minutes, and then it's a race to the finish to anybody who gets past that. Roman Krennikov in the lead. Adler swinging out wide here. When you look at that fifth lap, it's like, okay, how do they get their fourth, or their second fastest lap on the fourth one and their slowest lap on the fifth one? Outside of fatigue, on the, on the fifth lap is when this group of five fractured into two groups. You can move faster with a bigger group. That's why the fifth lap was the slowest one. 
Krennikov, Koski, Adler, Crouch, and Bjorben Carl Gumanson. Closing out lap six. Well ahead of the time cut of 40 minutes, but they'll only have this last lap to go, less than five minutes to finish. Meaning, now the race for these five athletes is underway. The question is, is when are they gonna start racing each other? But at the same time, this entire field should be able to make this last lap, save for maybe a handful of athletes. I think if you keep an eye on Yonikoski, he might be the guy that starts this thing off. I feel like he's really run a smart race here. Conserving some energy and... I wouldn't be surprised if Roman went first. And Koski, who, like you said, has had a great race so far, they, uh, as you say that, Koski pulls up ahead. But Roman has been the one that has jumped ahead of the pack at random moments in this top five. But as you said, Koski has been riding this group and leading this group for the last 36 minutes. Now Yona Koski increasing some speed on the left. On the right, Medeiros and Felder right next to each other. On the left, it's Jonah Koski taking a look back at Roman Krennikov, followed by Jake, probably Jeff Adler, pardon me, Jay Crouch, and then Bjorven Carl Gubinson. So Koski, who has been content to <coughs> ride the tire of the men with him in that pack towards the front as he now sees Roman Krennikov move back into first as Krennikov and Koski are starting to pull away from Adler, Crouch, and Gumanson. Not by much, though. It's a long lap, six minutes of hard racing. Koski looks like he might be thinking about trying to pass Roman on that turn. And honestly, what I would do in Koski's position is do what you've been doing for the last six laps, is that if Roman wants to go out, just go with him. You don't need to beat him halfway through the lap. Where that last part's gonna be. Maybe just stay on his wheel as long as you can until you get to that run transition. Possibly make a move there. But it's at that run transition, straight away to the finish line, downhill the whole way, up shift as high and as quick as you can once you get onto the bike and just race to the finish line. The Roman Krennikov with two minutes to go before that gate closes. So this should be the final lap and the final race to the finish. Now that pack of five starting to tighten a little bit here. See, Roman Karenikov is definitely has upped his gears. Now Jeff Adler and that has as well. And it slowed him down the turn, but like, if you look at Karenikov's pedal strokes, it's much slower than the other two. Jeff Adler, look at the Look at the cycle rate, the RPMs he's going. That means he's in a lower gear, he can get a faster cycle. That's so valuable in these tight turns on the back part of this course. If you're in a higher gear, it's a slow turn. It's what we said at the very beginning of this race. Well, Jeff Adler is in the lead. Kaike Cervani is the man who's getting past there and kind of bollocksing things up for that lead pack. One minute to go. So this will be the final race to the finish line. Adler leading Yonikoski. Roman Krennikov sits in third, followed by Jay Crouch and Bjorben Carl Gumanson. And now Koski making a move on Adler. Koski back in front. Koski will be the first man to the run portion of the course. So coming into this run portion, downshift your gears to a smaller gear so there's less resistance on the pedal because once you get to the run, and when we get back on the bike, you don't want it to be in a high gear. You want it to be in low and then upshift as quick as you can on that downhill finish. Yonikoski trying to hang on to this lead now. Pick up his fourth career test win. 
and his third in the opening test of the CrossFit Games. He also won event one in 2021 and pier paddle back in 2015. The gate has now closed. Koski getting set to make the transition. Here comes Adler in second. And it's Crouch and Krennikov fighting for third, but it's going to be Yoda Koski. With a great push at the end here to separate himself from the four men chasing him, and Yoda Koski picks up the win. Adler is going to get second. Crouch edging out Krennikov for third, and it's going to be Bjorven Carl Gubinson taking fifth. Just a masterful tactical race by Yonikoski. Crossing that finish line. And there is Bjorven Carl Gubinson, his 10th straight appearance here at the CrossFit Games has only finished lower than ninth once during that span. Aike Servani is going to get waved in, but he's a lap behind. And there is Yonikoski. Trying to recover after his fourth career test win. Now, Yella Hosta out of Belgium leading this pack. Moritz Fiebig is on the number 19 bike. That's James Sprague on the 25. And it's going to be Yella Hosta. He's going to get a top 10 finish. Lawrence Fiebig. And Dallin Pepper coming across. James Sprague is in as well. There's Brett Fakowski. Spencer Panchik with a late push. He is across. As more athletes finishing here. Martin looking over his shoulder as Paul Sager trying to catch up. Bailey Martin is in. Cole Sager's in. With Chandler Smith. Holds off Alex Vino at the finish. And there is Pat Vellner, who is going to once again have to dig out of an early hole here. And it's not his ability to do that. That's what he does. Not necessarily, uh, yeah, he digs himself a hole, but he climbs himself back. And the issues previous years when they had major cuts, like in 2019, that was a detriment to his comeback on the weekend. But it's the points you lose and the inability to basically close that gap after the course of the weekend. Noah Olson just got across the finish line. Sam Kwan is in. Sam Cornwaye, Will Morad. Luke Parker. Colt Mertens. David Shirunke is the man behind Pat Velner as Velner is done. There is Medeiros, who's now just coming across. And I don't know if he blew up or maybe something happened to the bike because he had something happen between lap four and lap five. He was about mid-pack on lap four and almost dead last after lap five. Cole Greasehaber. Uh, 
Klauser Jukic is just getting back on the bike for the final time to close out his test. Jukic making his third straight appearance here at the CrossFit Games. Both times inside the top 10, ninth in 2021, and then finished eighth last year. And Jukic is just going to coast across the finish line as he is in no danger of surrendering his current position. Archer Semenov will make his way across the finish line. It's just about every athlete has gotten across. Semenov getting across that finish line as well. Close out this opening test. There's the man who rode away with test number one, Yoda Koski. And you, know, you mentioned the word tactical. He was more or less perfect throughout this whole thing. Right from the start, but also helping other athletes really help him at the same time. As you said, that lead pack after about the first lap of Ather, BKG, Krenikov, Crouch, and Koski. And so many times you would see Koski coaching them. Hey, you go forward or I'm just going to pull back and, and sit on your back wheel. And then about halfway through that final lap, he just separated himself. and. Got himself his uh, first non-swimming event win of his career. And Yona Koski's with Nikki Brazier. Yona, there was about five of you guys just sort of leading the pack, drafting off one another, and it looked like you were talking to each other too. What was that communication like? <laughs> yeah, I guess like when you're riding in a group, you want everyone to you know take their turns to uh, to pull in the front because at our speed, drafting really makes a huge difference. So if you're the only one leading the pack all the time, you're basically giving the group a free ride so yeah we were I guess just trying constantly to push each other to you know do their turns and uh, yeah it worked out well I think in the beginning me and Jeff like had a small breakaway but then started slowing down once we saw that there was a smaller group behind us and yeah then it was the last last round race at the end yeah. Yeah. there were twists and turns different types of terrain you had a run what was the most difficult part of this course well for me i felt like the run was the hardest part for sure like uh, you had the long straight coming into like a couple twists or a couple turns before the run so the hardware was pretty checked up and then after yeah you know you knew you need to push the run if, because it's 200 meters you can easily lose five seconds if you if you're not with the pack in the run you like you you can easily lose the pack on the second straight after the run so yeah the run was was tough congratulations but a great way to start your competition yeah thank you very much appreciate it yoda Koski with his fourth career test win locks up 100 points in the process here's what's coming up later on today We'll have ESPN Plus coverage until 7 p.m. Central Time. That's when we'll move over to ESPN 2 from 2 to 4 local time. The Finding the Fittest show. Dave Ryan with Tommy Marquez, Jason Kaliba, Andy Sakamoto, and Tommy Oska will be part of that, along with Adrian Conway. And then we will have Men and Women's Test 3, the inverted medley, to close out the opening day of competition. First test is in the books. Emma Watson and Yona Kosi with the wins. Coverage continues here. Stay with us, everybody, at the 2023 Noble Cross of Games from Madison, Wisconsin. The 2023 Noble CrossFit Games are presented by Noble, the official footwear and apparel brand of CrossFit. Rogue, don't weaken. G-Shock, challenge your limits. The official watch of the Noble CrossFit Games. Trifecta, eat like you train. And RP Strength, the official nutrition coaching platform of the CrossFit Games.
Last year, they're facing the same way. Difficult way to synchronize. This year, they're facing what's preferable, what's easier. I always feel that it's better to face each other because you can really get a feel of their body language, their facial expressions. There's so many things that are non-verbal and verbal that you can read and where you're like, I'm going to put this down. You can see if they're shaky. You can kind of see the consistency of, of, of the rep and rate that you're going to be doing. Well, the facial is a very big one to look at straight away. Yes. Like <laughs> awkward eye contact to lighten the mood. <laughs> Krypton right now is out in front. Alex Smith, tremendous gymnast. No surprise here that that was the easiest thing he'll do all weekend. He and his brother, Ben Smith, 2015 fittest man on earth, leading this Krypton team that podiumed back in 2019. And you see the sense of urgency. You see these teams, they are running to their barbells. This is not a walk to our barbells, let's try to get there. This is a let's go pick it up, go into that squat snatch, and let's start squatting. 25 overhead squats performed in each segment, advancing the bar down the field as we go. Josh Alshama is facing us, Brittany Weiss with her back to us. This Invictus squad returning all four members from last year's third place team. Alshama told us, I don't like the color bronze. They decided very early that they were gonna come back and it's something new for Invictus. Typically they don't set teams early. They decide who wants to go team and then as they train, pick their best foursomes. They said, no, 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 this four from day one is our group. There was definitely unfinished business and they knew their, their goal, they are not being shy about it. They came here to win the CrossFit Games. Five seconds left and then we'll switch pairs. And each has an interval down. What is it like in this two minutes when you try to recover? Your heart rate is spiked through the roof. Your legs are burning up. You have to make sure that you're breathing and walking. You see these athletes walking back, trying to catch their breath, trying to get that lactic acid back into their arms or legs so that they can go for the next round. Jeremy, that's how it's done on the skier, but Jorge Fernandez, he ripped those handles. A whole height, just getting that hip hinge and getting as much length out of the ski erg ropes as he can to get every single calorie he can. Normally with this sort of thing, you're gonna get one calorie per pull obviously the stronger the pull the more calories are going to tick over the less time you're spending on there and the more time you can recover before you have to go to your overhead squats you see jorge on those rope climbs right he's going to get a big pulse for some of these athletes especially when fatigue hits they're going to have that shorter one keeping it close to their chest is this a similar pull you're pulling down on the skier you're sort of pulling down on the rope although your body weight is rising what's the difference in the movement and how it affects you when you compare this to the seated legless rope climbs, I'd be much prefer to get those elbows tucked into the body as close as possible. For the ski erg, the elbows are able to get out a little bit wider to release the lats, which are going to be the strongest part of the pull for both of those movements. Now we move on to the overhead squats where those lats now have to stabilize a weight as well as the shoulders overhead. The closer to that center of your body we can get that barbell, the easier the squat is going to be. Five more reps, and then it's 75 in the bank for Invictus. They just got a critical no rep there. You want to try to get through this segment before time runs out, and then you can advance the barbell. That's perfectly timed with two more seconds in this interval. Jamie mentioned the need for speed in the recipes to success. Athletes really coming off that start line in interval number two for the second pairing, really racing to position, trying to get every single second. Invictus know from last year, they got beaten by a second, so every second is absolutely crucial and trying to take that lead back from OBA. Speaking to a lot of teams coming into this weekend, they had said every place matters. So every second matters in every single test. So they know at all those little seconds are going to add up so they are sprinting from place to place there are cuts so you need to make sure you stay above each respective cut line after two days after three days we talk whether at the start and how weather affected this test number 10 from the day four of last year's games the cloud covers come over now, so the sun not really beating down. The humidity is way up, though, so that's going to affect the grip strength as well on the rope. 
not so much on the ski erg, but once you get to the barbell, that's going to get a little bit slippery once these athletes start to sweat a little bit more. Move fast, lift heavy is the first team back to the barbell in this interval as we check in with Lawrence. You already mentioned Jorge Fernandez and his hamstring injury. It really meant we never got a true sense of what Invictus could do at semi-final level. Same goes for CrossFit Oslo Navy Blue. Ivan Dalringa, their captain, has been harboring a hip and a back issue. And Nikolai Biladel did the first day at semi-finals with severe flu. He was so disorientated, his teams had to actually move him around the floor. So these are two teams who have both been on the podium last year who both perhaps struggled a bit in semi-finals, and now we really get an opportunity to see what they're capable of. Lauren, thank you. Jeremy, that sounds like you at the gym every day. <laughs> Doesn't have what? <laughs> Very disorientated, regardless of what, uh, what's written on the whiteboard. Invictus is crushing this test, and it's important to know there are a lot of really good teams out on the field right now. We haven't really looked at East Nashville proven. Move fast, lift heavy. Lauren just mentioned Oslo Navy Blue. Invictus is kind of throwing down the gauntlet right now. In a wide open field with no Rich Froning and no CrossFit Mayhem Freedom, who is going to step on the throat in test one? It's a big tone setter. This is where we saw some of these legless rope climbs break down in the earlier heat, but it looks like all of these athletes are staying strong. Their pull looks great. They're still using that big kip on that legless and controlling it nice on the way down. Andrea Nistler on the rope for East Nashville proven. Part of that Mayhem Freedom team the last couple of years. If you combine Andrea Nistler and Taylor Williamson, the greatest pair of women to ever compete as a unit on team's competition. And I, I don't think that's a controversial statement. Absolutely not. Everyone knows that when you're going up against them, you better bring your A game. Invictus in front, Navy Blue is seven back, 11 overhead squats for move fast, lift heavy, and it is East Nashville proven first to the barbell, if only by a couple of seconds here, with Nistler living, uh, lifting with first-time team athlete Tim Paulson. Interestingly, though, they are still 10 reps behind Invictus. Invictus have got the benefit of having done this as a four Oslo Navy Blue, another team that's done this as well. They've got a feeling of how it's going to affect them, but they haven't got the, the shuttle runs this time around, but they have got a lot of upper body fatigue they've got to deal with. And as we hit the end of our fifth interval, five of eight, there are two teams at 100 or more reps. East Nashville proven is at 100 even. Invictus is at 110. Boy, if this isn't time being a flat circle. If you have East Nashville proven and the two Mayhem ladies from a year ago just creeping up on Invictus and we get a race at the finish, oh Nelly. Move fast lift heavy though, two reps behind at 98, so still in touch. So this is going to be a great battle for the next five and a half minutes. And what a test to start things off for teams. And this has been a lot more brutal than we saw on day four last year. And Move Fast Lift Heavy has a lot of games experience amongst the four of them. So that plays a big factor in staying calm, understanding if you're not in the lead, you can make it up towards the end, saving a little bit of room in the tank for those final last rounds. Chloe Govan David is the newest member for Move Fast Lift Heavy. The other three returned from last year. Chloe was on Pro One Montreal in the previous season. And they're doing exactly what their name says. Move fast, lift heavy. Here they come, first ones to their barbells. And that's where the timing becomes critical, right? You just did three overhead squats, had to drop the ball and advance because you couldn't get to the end of the segment by the last interval. So it's a couple of critical seconds as Move Fast Lift Heavy tries to play catch up here with Tola Maracano and Taylor Williamson, East Nashville proven. They're going to work here and Invictus's barbell is still untouched. Brittany Weiss and Josh El Shama have run into some trouble back at the ring. I controlled it! Huh? I don't know who Josh is yelling to coach-wise 
back behind the line, but Invictus is running into some issues with the rope as Jorge Fernandez gets back to work with Devin Kim. Here's Alshama. Failure on the rope is deadly. Oh, that's gonna burn, and I don't, they said no rep? I think the height of it? I think potentially even the slide down, the slide because down. you've gotta grip that rope as a safety factor as well, all the way down, so that slide is going to be absolutely costly, but you think time under tension on that rope, Akshama spending an eternity getting that one rep done. And hand over hand is the standard. That sliding isn't allowed, but being able to get zero reps in that round on those overhead squats is very costly for this team. So a no rep, he has no skin left on his hands. And he now has a seven rep deficit with East Nashville proven at 117. No one's gonna finish this test at all today. 175 is the target total of the overhead squads. And getting a no rep on those rope climbs is extremely frustrating, but we're seeing how he's gonna respond in his last round. Now here comes Oslo. 97 reps right now for Avon Ringard and Leona Richter. We have one more two minute interval to go when these 20 seconds are done. And Oslo is now onto that 125 square. Move fast, lift heavy is a rep behind in East Nashville proven. Boy, Nistler and Paulson look like they are attached. Final two minutes. And what did we see with East Nashville proven? They were not in the lead in the first couple of rounds, but they slowly crept up, and here they are. Are you sure Rich Froning's not on that team? <laughs> isn't, that the, isn't that the play, right? You bide your time, you play your strategy, and at the end, you finish. I reckon the girls have still got Rich Froning's voice in their head. Absolutely, I don't think that ever goes away. <laughs> Christian Harris here working for Move Fast, Lift Heavy. It is something we talked about, the, the, the proven crew with. They trained under Rich Froning for several years. And Andrea Nisner and Taylor Williamson are great in their own right, but they get that tutelage. And now that unit trains under Tia Toomey for Proven. And Tola Maracanio trained under Annie Thoris' daughter last year. The coaching of that unit is unreal. And with a minute left to go in this test, you're seeing it on display. A nine rep lead for the team for Proven. Probably enough of a buffer for the Proven team just to chip away, knowing exactly where OBA were in the previous heat. They don't need to really exert themselves too much, but they need to make sure that they're extending their lead over. Well, here's the thing, though. East Nashville Proven, with 30 seconds to go, is still back at the rig. Oh. Move Fast Lift Heavy is doing work on the overhead squad. So are the Franco's Misfits. Move Fast Lift Heavy is now five reps back. And with 15 seconds to go, Move Fast Lift Heavy. They didn't want to be messed around with, and they are letting people know. Mayhem also in the mix, though. Where did Mayhem Independence come from? Talk about the Rich Froning method. What? We didn't. Eat, I don't know if we mentioned them. All eyes were on the East Nashville Proven and this move fast lift heavy. 132 reps for the team from Mayhem Independence. Mayhem Time is a flat circle. Um, I move fast, lift heavy. Just ripped second place out of the jaws of victory. Franco's Misfits did a phenomenal job all out as well. 125 reps for them. They equal Move Fast, Lift Heavy, and East Nashville Proven, but 132 for Mayhem Independence. Outstanding. And like we talked about, this field is wide open, and this is going to be proof that it is in for a long, the long haul and a great weekend of competition. <laughs> oh, I love it.
Oh my. Let's take a look at how things, what are, what's in the water in Cookville? Jeremy had it happen. Great start from the Invictus team. They knew what they were getting themselves into from last year's test number 10. And a very upright squat, exactly what you want to see from that movement. Big hip hinge from Jorge Fernandez to the left of screen. And short, choppy movement. And Al Sharma, that crucial no rep at that slide. That little slide there has cost him a dearly. And no rep from East Nashville proven as well. Jamie Higgia mentioned it, respect the rope. But what an outstanding performance. Sam Demeester, Anthony DeChico, Zoe Jones, and Kyra Milligan. Uh, they're the new team from Independence, from Mayhem. They've got a test win at 132 reps, and they just bided their time, chipping away. Angelo DeChico, he's the disciple. He might be more dangerous. Down to Lauren Smith. CrossFit Mayhem. Where did you come from in that event? How did you manage pacing so effectively? Um, I think that in the warm-up area, we kind of agreed that we were just going to ski at about 1,500 coming out of the gate for the guys and maybe 12 for the girls. And as you can see, the first couple rounds, that wasn't the fastest, but it turned out to be a good strategy because we held the pace for all eight rounds. Now, there's no denying coming into the CrossFit Games with the CrossFit Mayhem banner brings a little bit of pressure, perhaps. How are you managing all of that? Um, I wasn't before this event. I was very nervous, but this is a good icebreaker. Felt great to get a win. How do you build off with this now? You open the weekend with an event win. Brings with it a certain amount of confidence. How does that help? Yeah, um, I mean, I've watched Rich for so long, and I see how he handles it. So we're going to take the weekend one event at a time, just the way Rich would do it. Is he, Kyra, helping you out in terms of the week, in terms of strategy? Rich, yes, definitely. He spent like 20 minutes yesterday with me for the bike event. So I'm really excited for that tonight. Well, we look forward to watching you. Guys, congratulations with your opening event win. Uh-oh. <laughs> Big old uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's all <laughs> mayhem. I, <laughs> my goodness. Still speechless. Yeah. For once. I mean, yeah, thanks for playing. <laughs> mayhem still on top. A team from that affiliate has now won seven consecutive team tests at the CrossFit Games. East Nashville proven seven reps behind, tying with Move Fast, Lift Heavy, and CrossFit Franco's The Misfits. We saw Krypton early, Ben Smith's squad in the mix, and OBA, boy, time is a flat circle. They finished sixth on this test two years in a row. Invictus getting a little bit of damage on that one, but no doubt they'll be coming back in the later tests. Oh, one test in the books. Listen. It's a marathon, not a sprint. We got a long way to go. The teams have more work to do later on today. More coverage at games.crossfit.com as we roll on from Madison. It's the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games, and we're just getting going.
Day number one of competition continues here at the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games from Madison, Wisconsin, as we have moved inside the North Park at the Alliant Energy Center. I'm Sean Woodland with Jay Singer. We have Nikki Brazer down on the field here as we get set for the pink chipper. Oh yeah, just bringing it back to some classic chipper here at the North Park Stadium, starting with those 10 pig flips into 25 chest to bar pull-ups, 50 toes to bar, 100 wall ball shots, and then work your way back. 270 total reps, 18 minute time cap. Your recipe for success delivered by Trifecta. Be wary of your rest time. We're gonna take some breaks, some intentional breaks, but keep an eye on the clock. You can lose time when it comes to big sets and big breaks and save some for the turn. Those last 10 pig flips are gonna decide that they win. Let's send it down to Nikki Brazier. Of the pig down here. This is the fifth year that we've seen the pig show up at the CrossFit Games, and this is the point in competition where we get to see how much experience matters. The pig was not in the warm-up area, so for many of these rookie athletes, it may be the first time that they ever get a chance to flip the pig. We'll see if any of the returning games athletes have an easier time on the way down and on the way back. Two heats of 20 women here in test number two, the second of three tests that the individuals will face here on day number two. Olivia Kerstetter will be in lane eight, one of the youngest competitors here in the field, a former teenage champion making her individual debut. But one of the strongest in the field that in 2021, she had the heaviest snatch of any athlete out here on the floor. Uh, Bethany Flores making her return uh, to the CrossFit Games. She's been battling some back problems this season. This is the heaviest implement right now that she will lift that we know of. So we'll be keeping an eye on her, especially in the opening portion of this test. Ten flips on that 350 pound pig. And down in lane number four is Abigail Domit. She's out early here, as are Emily Turner and Olivia Kirsten. Michelle, when you look at a down and back chipper in this pyramid style, these first 10 flips, we said this for the year, it's not going to win you the test, but it will potentially blow you up for the middle gymnastics portions. There is a, look, it's heavy. We think about the back, we think about the posterior chain and the glutes and hamstrings and back erectors, but what this does to your grip, if you do not have good technique, will wreck the rest of this test, especially with the 150 reps of gymnastics we have on the pull-up rig after this. Kerstetter and Sydney Wells in lanes eight and 14. So take a look at Olivia Kerstetter. Now one thing with Kerstetter is she's youngest athlete in the field. She's been dominating the team division for the last couple of years, qualified for the first time individually, known a lot for her strengths, but she's got a decent engine. She won the worldwide quarterfinal test of that 20 minute AMRAP of the Road GHGs and VMs. 25 chest to bar pull-ups now. Olivia Kerstetter in the blue top and gray shorts will be the first to start those. And now Sydney Wells moving to the pull-up bar and Ellie Turner as well, and then down in lane number 20, Michelle Bastet is done with her 10 pig flips. 270 total reps. Keep an eye on our scoring hat. Your leader in the heat will have her name on the far left side, and the number in the white box will indicate how many repetitions that woman has completed. The number in the white box next to everyone else's name will indicate how many reps they are behind of the leader. Kirk Sitter open with a set of 15. Then finish with a set of 10, so she's at 35 reps plus the 10 pig flips she was doing, so she's going to advance to those 50 toes to bar. Kerstetter getting to work on the toes to bar, but the 85 rep mark is when she will move to the wall balls. Sydney Wells and Bethany Flores sit in second and third. Victoria Campos is moved into the top five as well. Kirk Center with a set of 10 to open things up. And you gotta be careful not to get wrapped up into the moment and the people around you. 50 toes to bar for these elite athletes may not seem like a lot, but when you double it on the backside of 100, plus the additional totality of the 50 chest to bar pull-ups, Almost look at the bulk set as the way you approach these movements rather than their individual broken up sets. 
Ellie Turner on the right side of your screen is on the toes to bar. Have to complete 50 reps here. Sydney Wells is now pulled even with Olivia Kerstetter. Ellie Turner in lane seven is an athlete to keep your eye on once we get to the wall ball portion of this test. 100 reps, 14 pound ball to a nine foot target. That is so short for these elite athletes. Last year they had to go to a higher target when we're thinking about that test called hat trick, which she crushed when she cycled those wall balls. Kerstetter has 20 reps remaining in the set of 50. Sydney Wells looking to overtake Kerstetter for the lead in this first of two heats. Wells making her first career appearance here at the CrossFit Games. We're used to seeing her twin sister competing here. Brooke Wells, who's done extremely well here at the CrossFit Games, did not qualify this year. Bethany Flores on the right side. Now your leader, once she hits the 85 rep mark, she will be done. Thank Flores you. will now be the first to the wall balls. And people may forget because she's been injured or you know missed competition over the last couple of years, but going into the 2021 season, it was her, Carrie Pierce, and Daniel Brandon who were all in the mix of being podium contenders in 2021. Of course, she missed after not being able to compete on a medical withdrawal, but Bethany has been imp greatly improving over the couple of years, taking fifth this year at her semifinal in a very casual way. And she can keep her all together. She's a dangerous athlete out there. Flores and Wells are the only two women on the wall balls right now. Once they hit the 185 rep mark, as Flores now has 83, now 82 before she'll get there, they'll turn back and go back through the chipper. Set a 20 for Flores. When you look at the middle portion of this, Sean, 100 wall ball shots, everyone's like, all right, we went from the uh, the pulling, grippy stuff to the legs. And it's usually the legs that are not the problem when it comes to cycling high volume wall ball shots. The amount of upper body fatigue and interference in this test, from the pig flips, to the chest to bar, to the toes to bar, the shoulders and biceps when it comes to these wall ball shots are what usually limits people's ability to do big sets. Shelby Neal is the athlete who's right there with Sydney Wells. Now Emma McQuaid on the right side with Bethany Flores. Flores still your leader on the left through 122 of the 270 total reps. Emily Rolfe, meanwhile, and Bailey Rail are starting to move up. It's like Bethany is right past the 40 mark. Wells have got one more honor. So a lot of these athletes are sticking with set to 20. Olivia Kerstetter starting to make up some ground as well. And Kerstetter has now moved ahead of Flores and Wells by a couple of reps. And now Wells taking a break. This middle portion of Hunter wall balls, this is really the part where people should take their time a little bit. I know that sounds a little obvious, like, hey, don't go too fast here. But what you do here on the wall ball shots will vastly affect of what happens on the back half. We talked about the recipe success is saving some for the turn. This is the turn portion. There's 20 pigs out there weighing 350 pounds with 10 reps to get to the finish line. Everything you do from this point going forward needs to set you up for success for those last 10 reps. Olivia Kerstetter back in third place. For more on her, let's go down to Nikki Brazier. I had a chance to catch up with Olivia before the start of competition. I asked her about her mindset and her feelings before everything kicked off. She told me that this truly feels like such an amazing opportunity and experience for her. And she's really just trying to soak it all in and have fun because really, you only get one rookie year. She is prepared though. She trained all summer with the Proven crew and had a lot of fun, did a lot of hard work with them. So she really felt ready to take this on. Right now, Olivia Kerstetter back in the lead through 164 of the 270 reps at the 185 mark. That's when she will head back to the pull-up bar and work her way back through the chipper, beginning with 50 toes of bar. 
And you'll see this with some of the athletes that have a maybe a bit more of a bias to a certain aspect. Maybe you're a stronger, bigger athlete. Maybe you're more gymnastics. The way this test shakes out in this chipper is that you'll see some movement up and down with some of those more specialized athletes versus the one that have the best of both worlds. Sydney Wells, Bethany Flores, and Olivia Kersetter have been trading the lead here on this portion of the second test. And Wells only has now six remaining. It's a quick break there, which is five reps left. Yeah, not necessarily a bad break. But what we had coming out with the 25 chest bar and the 50 toes bar, now we're going 50 to 25. Big difference on the return trip to those pigs. Wells was the first athlete to make the turn. Kerstetter and Flores both done. Bailey Rail and Emily Rolfe look to be the next to finish. Your top athletes coming out the toes of our, we're doing about sets of 10, five sets of 10 on the 50 coming in. See, 235 reps, pardon me, Chase. That's what they need to hit before they move to the chest bar. Well, if you look at the technique between, especially Sydney Wells and Flores, is Bethany is basically just dead hanging from the bottom, and she has the flexibility and core strength to just pick those toes up with not a lot of movement, where Sydney Wells is quite the opposite. She has that nice, big swing kip, and it's not necessarily one is better than the other. It's which one is better for me as an individual athlete than the other. A lot of athletes using grips to protect their hands. The Bear Complex is giving viewers the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games 20% off site one. You can head to bearcomplex.com. And the thing of those grips, Sean, is that just grips in general, this allows you to hang on to the pull-up bar much better than just with your bare hands, which actually went into the reason why they had that grip change rule from semifinals to the CrossFit Games. Sydney Wells through 210 of the 270 reps. She's got 25 toes to bar remaining. Bethany is still stacking with that, that minor kip, and that kip could either be a product of that's what's more comfortable for her, and it also could be is that maybe for Bethany, when you get in that really big extended, hyper extended kip swing position, that might not be the best thing for her back. Olivia Kerr set her back in the lead, chalking up her hands, left side of your screen. Now Emily Rolf is starting to gain some ground as well. Rolf. In the top five right now. Look at a big set of toes to bar. Don't sleep on Rolf. She she won the 2021 test where it was the running and 30 toes to bar for three sets. So she has great endurance capacity, but also good volume capacity when it comes to toes to bar. There's Bailey Rail, who now sits in fourth place in this first of two heats. 235 reps. That's the mark. They need to hit before you start your second and final set of chest to bar pull-ups. Daily Rail again, this is what got her to the CrossFit Games to begin with, was that final test in semifinals that had three sets of 20 toes to bar. And she had to basically win it outright, which involved sending three unbroken sets of toes to bar just to qualify for the CrossFit Games. So she definitely has a good capacity for high volume gymnastics. Bailey Rail has moved into a battle for the lead right now. Well, Bethany Flores is now on to the chest to bar pull up. She got through four reps before taking a break to chalk up her hands. And now Bailey Rail will start her chest to bar pull ups. And it's important for Bailey Rail to do well on these portions. That pig weighs 350 pounds. She's only 135 pounds. <laughs> I mean, triple body weight pig flip. No, thank you. We talked to Adrian Bosman, competition director, yesterday about this test in particular. 
and he said a lot of people who tested this did very well until they got to the second set of pig flips and got pinned by the thing. It, that's a big part of just competition in general is that you gotta look at what the critical element of the test actually is. It's not necessarily gymnastics, monostructure, or weightlifting as a modality that's the critical element, but a piece of equipment or a particular skill or some particular movement. We hear an athlete's got to the pig first and got capped by the end of this. So it's not about who gets there first, but how they got there in the first place. Well, Bethany Flores will get back to the pig first. And now here comes Bethany's running Bailey Rail. It's like Bethany gonna get a little more chalk on the hands. Dry off her forearms a little bit. Bailey Rail belting up. A lot of time lost on that. But for 10 flips and the amount of time it takes, it's a good move if, if you just need to have that. Well, Kerstetter and Rolf are now both done, and Bailey Rail has that first big flip done. Now Bethany Flores will get to work. Kerstetter belting up, and Emily Rolf walking down to the pig. Two down for Bailey Rail. Now Olivia Kerstad are getting to work. Far side of the field in the blue and gray. Matches up with Flores already. Flores has only got one in, and Kerstad are already hitting the second one. Okay. Olivia Kerstad are continuing to work here, and Kerstad is in the lead. Three women have started their final set of big flips. Bailey Rail in second, and Bethany Flores in third, and now Emily Rolfe is onto her first flip. Her center left side rail on the right. You can see Bethany Flores in the background there on the box on the left side of your screen. Her center continuing to work here. She has five reps remaining. Shelby Neal, Sydney Wells, and Emma McQuaid are on to the pig as well. And Kelly Baker. She's on the top of your screen, far side of the field. And Kirkstetter took one small break after the set of five. But what she's been doing now is that thing ticks over the top. She'll just walk up and put her hands underneath right away. It's almost like if you got a barbell where you're doing singles and you're not taking that step back, you're just staying flat-footed over it. It just helps them keep keep those rest periods short. It's what we said at the top of the top of the test. Final rep for Olivia Kerstetter, and she is going to take heat number one. Kerstetter coming into time with 15 minutes, 49.36 seconds as Bailey Rail right now is your leader on the field. Emily Rolfe has now moved into third just ahead of Bethany Flores. I'm impressed with Bailey Rail. It hasn't been terribly fast, but it's been very consistent. And Bailey Rail up and over for her final rep, and she's going to take second place in this heat. 135 pounds, and she did a very nice job on that 350-pound pig. If you feel like trying this at home, drag your refrigerator outside and flip it around the street and see how that feels. Let's maybe unhook the water connection first. <laughs> Emily Rolfe is now across. Third place for her in the heat. And Sydney Wells is making a bit of a move on Bethany Flores. This is the final rep for each of them, and Flores gets off first, and she will edge out Wells for fourth place in the heat. 1703.18, seven tenths of a second ahead of Sydney Wells. Shelby Neal is now the leader out there, and her pig is sideways. looking like it might go into the other lane and she's trying to adjust it there as it tips over. And Ellie Turner in lane seven just completed her final flip and Turner's gonna get across ahead of Shelby Neal. Fisa Goffey is now your leader on the floor as we have just 20 seconds remaining. Sagafi with one flip left. 
one of the smaller athletes in the field for Fisa Goffey. She has got to be pleased with this performance. Well, she needs a good performance after what happened in test number one on Ryan. Fisa Goffey's done it. She's going to sneak in inside the time cap with about five seconds to spare. And that will do it. Olivia Kerstetter sets the time to beat 15 minutes, 49.36 seconds for the 17-year-old. One heat remains. Olivia Kerstetter looking to pick up her first test win as an individual here at the CrossFit Games. We'll be back with more action here from Madison, Wisconsin in just a second.
One heat down, one remains here for the women in test number two. The second of three tests that the individual athletes will face here on the opening day of competition at the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. I'm Sean Woodland with Chase Ingram. Nikki Brazier is down on the competition floor. Test number two, the bikes are gone, but the pigs are here. Pigs are here and a lot of gymnastics on the rig. 10 pig flips at 355, 350 pounds, 25 chest of bar, 50 toes of bar. 100 wall ball shots in the middle, 14 pound ball to a nine foot target. Work your way back to the finish line. Recipe for success delivered by Trifecta. Be wary of your rest time. If you're taking breaks on the pig, make sure you know what the clock is doing. Don't just sit there in your head. Time is an illusion out here on the North Park field. Save some for the turn, because those last 10 pigs, pig flips, are going to be that deciding factor. Let's bring in the third member of our team, Nikki Brazier, down on the field. Thank you, Sean. Well, Heat One showed us just how devastating the pig can be. Coming in at 6'10 and 350 pounds wasn't necessarily the way down the field that really slowed down the athletes, but the way back where many of them were buried. Several of the athletes in Heat One did not finish this test before the time cap. Only eight women able to get inside the 18 minute time cap. 20 more athletes on the field here and keep an eye in the middle lanes 9, 10 and 11. Three women who are all looking at finishing on top of the podium on Sunday. Annie Thorstadter, Gabby Magawa and Laura Horvath. Gabby Magawa, Laura Horvath, fifth and six. Gabby Magawa got fifth place in this. Annie Thorstadter with 11. She's back in individual competition for the first time since 2021. And this is a test that shakes up well for all three of these athletes. We are underway, second and final heat. Time to beat belongs to 17-year-old Olivia Kerstetter, 15 minutes, 49.36 seconds. Right away, it's Annie Thoris' daughter. Out front early along with Laura Horvath in the middle of the field. Hey, looking very smooth. Horvath lost her grip a little bit on that second pig flip, and that's what happens. You don't really get a good grip with this pig. It's almost a fingertip grip. Think about if you were to do a pull-up on a door frame type of grip. It's going to tax the forearms. It's going to tax the biceps, all of which you need for those middle 150 gymnastic reps on the rig. Horvath, Thoris Dutter, and Alex Gazan, your top three right now. Ten total flips here. Scoring hat on top of your screen. The athlete on the far left side is your leader, and the number in the white box will indicate how many repetitions that athlete has completed. The number in the white box next to all the other athletes' names is how many reps they are behind. Annie thought she had done 10 and had to uh, take a second to come back and do that final flip. Horvath and Thoris Daughter, first two women to the 25 chest to bar pull-ups. And that's when it pays to be a veteran in the sport for so long between these two athletes. As Nikki said earlier, there is no pig in the warm-up area. And unless somehow you have one of these or built one of these for home, like these aren't for sale. <laughs> like this is all they have is kind of what Boz told us the other night. So unless you have experience with this in competition at the CrossFit Games, you don't have an advantage when it comes to those pig flips. Alex Kazan was the third woman to the chest of our pull-ups along with Christine Kohlenbrand. 35 reps is what they need to complete before they will get to work on the 50 toes to bar. And now Thoris Daughter and Horvath are both working on those. Five is the number that Horvath is looking to get to to move on to the 100 wall balls. And Thor Sauter is right up there with Laura Horvath. I don't think her numbers are actually getting registered at the moment. They're rep for rep at, the, at this point in time. 270 total reps here in the pick chipper. Alex Kazan on the left side of your screen. Currently behind Horbath and Thoris Daughter. Very curious to see how Kazan builds off 
that finish in semifinals this year. She was a rookie last year. And you see those rookies at the CrossFit Games, they get a little big-eyed, and that performance doesn't really indicate their ability. But how she did in semifinals this year, I'm very curious to see that leap she takes from year one to year two. Annie Thorosauter is now neck and neck with Laura Horvath on the right side of your screen. Thorosauter, a two-time champion, won the CrossFit Games in 2011 and 2012. She's the only woman to compete in three different decades here at the Games. Stood on the podium in three different places as well. I think she's two for two for all, for all uh, first, seconds, and thirds. Christine Kohlenbrander has started to put some pressure on Horvath and Thor's daughter. Kohlenbrander made her first individual appearance at the CrossFit Games last year, finished 27th overall. And Thor's daughter is now on to the wall balls. The 100 reps that she needs to complete. And Thoris Daughter is the only woman on this portion of the test. For these elite athletes, 100 wall ball shots, 14 pound ball to a nine foot target is a minor inconvenience at best for them. And this is not where you're gonna pull away from the rest of the field, but this is, a, this is an opportunity for these athletes to just kind of settle down, get their breathing back, get their heart rate under control. Approaching the five minute mark here, timing is presented by G-Shock, the official watch of the Noble CrossFit Games. And Sean, as you're looking at Annie Thor Sauter on the left, Emma Carey sitting on the right. Emma Carey took dead last in test number one this morning. And she's one of those athletes that had top 10, maybe outside chance of podium potential. So she's got a big hole to climb out of this weekend. Laura Horvath and Annie Thoris daughter are your leaders right now in this second heat. Christine Kohlenbrander is in the top three. And Emma Carey is starting to make a charge here as well. Emma Carey in lane number eight. So your top athletes in the previous heat all doing sets of 20. Emma Carey on the right side is challenging for the top spot in this heat. 15 minutes, 49.3 seconds, six seconds is your top score from Olivia Kerstetter in heat number one. I think Carey holds the med ball where those hands are fairly narrow, flares her elbows out a lot. And when you do that, you're actually taking away from the chest and shoulders ability to press and push that wall ball. And it's just going straight to the triceps in the back of the shoulders. Is that going to mess up your toes bar and chest bar? No. Is it going to have an effect on the pig later? Yes. Thoris Sauter taking a break in the middle of your screen. Emma Carey continuing to work. It's like Carey is about 70 reps in. Horvat 10 behind her. Raptus and Kazan all within about five reps. But Emma Carey is trying to make a move here in the 100 wall ball shots. Top athletes on the screen right now. As Annie Thorosauter trying to hang on to the lead that she built in the opening portion of this test. Christine Kohlenbrander on the left side toward the top three. So you see a, a good difference of just levers. Like the length that Amy Thorsauter has to go to get below that, in that below parallel position versus in the carry. And the carry back to work right side of your screen. She had a rough go in the opening test, so she really needs to have a strong performance here to start working her way up the standings. Obviously, it is early, but you never want to start 
in that hole after just one test. And now Emma Carey, first woman back to the pull-up bar, followed closely by the former two-time fitness woman on earth, Annie Thoris daughter. And Annie Thoris on her is very steady, very smooth, ability to kind of catch your breath, let your heart rate settle down. Emma Carey pushed those 100 wall ball shots extremely hard. But that's the athlete that she is. I mean, you Matt, hear Matt Torres talk about almost having to control her intensity, that she doesn't really feel pain or, or is afraid of going to that dark place. And that's all good and well. But if that dark place is going to hurt you on the back end of this race, it's not worth it. 50 reps here on the toes, Zabard. Thoros daughter and Carey, the only two women to have made the turn. Get your official 2023 Noble CrossFit Games gear and score a bonus gift with the purchase. Scan the QR code now to redeem a few terms and conditions. Christine Kohlenbrander is now onto the toes of bars. Laura Horvath is there as well. And Ariel Lowen will keep an eye on her on the far end of the field from Christine Kohlenbrander. Emma Carey taking another break. She and Annie Thoris daughter are the first two women to start their second and final set of 50 toes to bar. There is Ariel Lowen. Lowen making her third straight appearance here at the CrossFit Games. Her best finish was last year. She took 11th place overall. Approaching the 10 minute mark, 18 minute time cap here. And it's Olivia Kerstetter who does have the top score from heat number one, 15 minutes, 49.36 seconds. Carey dropping down to sets of five, but she only has five more toes to bar to go. Amy Thor saw her, but it's three reps behind her. Carey is now done with her second set of toes to bar. Got through those in about two and a half minutes. Christine Kohlenbrander currently sits in a battle for third place with Ariel Lowen. They're separated by about a rep. And it's now Emma Carey gets to work on her set of 25 chest to bar pull-ups. Got about 10 reps on that first set from Eric Emma Carey, right side box, left side of Annie Thor's daughter. Big set of 10 to start for Carey, Annie Thor's daughter, right about seven. Now, as far as the time between these two, we talked about the race at the pig. Emma Carey was about 30 to 35 seconds slower than Annie's 10 flip. So if that remains the same, if Annie stays within about 30 seconds of Emma out of these chest to bar pull ups, she has the potential to pass her in the last 10 flips. 260 reps is the mark that Emma Carey needs to get to. She is done. And now 10 wow. final pig flips for Emma Carey, a former teenage champion, finished first in the 14 to 15 year old division in 2019. Made her individual debut in 2021, took 16th overall. And then last year, a back injury forced her to take the season off. 350 pounds on the pig. Emma Carey trying to chase down Olivia Kerstetter here. Annie Thoris' daughter is getting close to finishing. She's in her final three reps. Now, Way ahead of Thor's daughter, but she's taken enough of a break to open that door a little bit for Annie to possibly catch her. And that was a fight for Emma Carey. She's got nine reps left, and now Annie Thor's daughter is done. Thor's daughter will be the second woman to the pig. And look how wide her feet. Oh, wow. And Sean, we talked about this in Heat 1. It doesn't matter how fast you get to the pig. It matters how you got to the pig. Well, here comes Laura Horvath and to Laura. join Thor's daughter and Oh, Carrie. what a move! Just pick it up right in her face! Emma, Emma <laughs> Carey's just watching Laura Horvath rip through two reps, and now three for Laura Horvath. Annie Thor's daughter is 
getting to work. Ariel Lowen is also on the pig, but Laura Horvath is leaving everybody behind right now. Someone check the weight in that pig for Horvath. She's got five reps remaining as Laura Horvath, and she has more than two and a half minutes to go before the top time from Olivia Kersetter hits. Horvath in check-in said, I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, Sean. I'm here to F some stuff up. And that she is in this test. One final rep for Laura Horvath looking to pick up the test win here in the pig chipper. And she will do it. 100 points for Laura Horvath. With a smile on her face. Now, Ariel Lowen has moved into second place. She's at the top part of your screen. Horvath by more than two minutes. So Lowen has passed Thor Sauter and Carey. And in the back, bottom middle part of your screen in the blue hat is Alexis Raptus. Raptus, who got fourth this morning in the bike ride. Horvath got sixth in this. If Raptus can get inside either Ariel Lowen's time or Kersetter's time, she actually may find herself in first place after this test. Well, Ariel Lowen is done. So she's going to take second place in the test and second place in the heat as now Olivia Kersetter's time slides to third. Great finish for Lowen. If you look forward to the final event of the day with that gymnastics skills test, and I'm looking right at Ariel Lowen as one of those that could have a top three finish in that one as well. Raptus only has a couple of reps remaining here. That's her final one, and she's done. So Raptus is across, and that'll be good enough for a third place finish in the test. As Horvath, Lowen, and Raptus all get in ahead of, of the top time from Olivia Kersetter. Emma Carey is on her final flip. And now Emma Carey will come across. And Carey will take fourth place in the test as she is able to beat Kersetter as well. Christine Kohlenbrander and Annie Thoris daughter and Alex Gazan, your leaders on the field. You look at Annie Thoris on her top part of your screen. We talked about the back half. Save some for the return. The last 10 flips for Annie are a drastic difference in the first. And it's Alex Gazan who's going to win that battle. So Gazan is in. Fifth place in the heat, sixth in the test, and here comes Annie Thoris' daughter. It's good enough for an eighth place finish in this test for Thoris' daughter. There's Emma Tall. Less than 90 seconds to go before we hit the 18 minute time cap. And on Enganez is in. Emma Lawson, Emma Lawson, who won the opening test. That's why she's wearing the leader's jersey. Leader, overall leader, will always be dressed in white and red. And Lawson is done. Lawson will take 10th in the heat, 15th place in the test. And here comes Gabby Magawa. 30 seconds to go before we hit the time cap. Paige Powers is on her final flip, and she'll get in with time to spare. Danielle Brandon is in. Harine Freilva 
your leader on the field right now, and she will sneak in. And that will do it, but Laura Horvath just demolishing this test. 13 minutes, 50.40 seconds. The only woman to go sub 14, and she beat Olivia Kerstetter's top time from heat one by more than two minutes. And Laura Horvath wasn't even in the conversation on the back half of this test. It was all Emma Carey's late charge on Annie Thor's daughter, but the second rep for Emma. Failed it on the second one. And then here comes Laura Horvath, who just big pick moved everybody and put it on the table for the last 10 reps and beat the next closest athlete by almost a minute at the end. Take notes, gentlemen coming up after this. Whatever she did, do the same thing. Let's send it down to Nikki Brazier with your test winner. Laura, did they forget to fill your pig? I mean, you really approached it and had no problem with it at a time when many of your other competitors were stopped. How were you able to push through on the back half of this test? To be honest, when the first time I picked it up because we didn't have uh, to eat in the warm-up area. So I remember from last year we had to do 20 straight, so I thought it was going to be heavier, to be honest. It was surprisingly lighter on the way there. On the way back, uh, no, it was heavier. They filled it. Take us through your morning so far, coming from the bike event to here. How is your body holding up? Where are you feeling the most wear and tear? I feel great. I just tried to go. I was surprised we only started Thursday and not Wednesday, because every year I was here, it, we only started at, on Wednesday. So I'm just here, and I'm ready to go and attack every workout. Love it. Hungry for it. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Seventh career win for Laura Horvath, 1350.40 seconds. Ariel Lowen with a late charge. She's going to take second place, followed by Alexis Raptus and Emma Carey. And it's Olivia Kerstetter who will finish fifth after winning heat number one. Women are done. Men coming up next as they take on the pig chipper here at the North Park at the Alliant Energy Center in Madison, Wisconsin. Stay with us, everybody, as our coverage continues at the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games.
That's it, Carolyn. Don't forget to use your legs. Three more. Last they say that CrossFit is not for everyone, but it's for anyone. The thing is, people make an incorrect assumption that it's not for them based on self-limiting beliefs, based on things that they assume from social media or society, and that is what's absolutely not the case. You just have to find the right CrossFit that matches with your values and and feels like a good place to be and you know you'll find your tribe and your community of people and when we moved to town man we were family rich it was great but i had no friends when i came to auburn Everyone was friendly, but they all had their people. And so it was tough to find friends. And uh, that's why I came to CrossFit, actually. I believe that CrossFit is a great vehicle that brings people through the door, but fitness is everything. I mean, it's our emotional fitness, our mental fitness. And for a lot of people, I think they walk through the door of Auburn CrossFit for that hour, for that great hour of the day that provides them the release that they need. People at Auburn CrossFit are some of the most surprising parts. I, I didn't anticipate that. Man, we have a, a 92 year old CrossFitter here. Annie is famous. She's the one that inspires the entire box. My name is Annie Holmes. I am gonna be 93 in January. Um, she started CrossFit at 89 and had never really done any type of fitness that I'm aware of. Never in in any universe did I think my mother would consider going to any kind of a gym. I just fall in love with the, the way my, my body was changing, that I was finding muscles I never had. That's one of the, the things that I think that people undervalue is the importance of we're all going to age and something's going to be difficult at some point, but Things such as CrossFit make those recoveries or those difficult times more bearable because we have laid the groundwork. But in all cases, however people get it done, what matters is they, that they get these ideas in their bodies. They don't just keep it in their heads. They need to put themselves on the hook to do something that is just uncomfortable because when they do that, they discover benefits that you can't get from shopping to deal with your depression. You can only get from challenge. And challenge is this rare gift that increasingly, in a world that worships comfort at every turn, we, we desperately need it. Our kids need it. Our parents need it. I need it. And if I'm not actively looking for uncomfortable things, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna drift into comfort at, at every turn. And we know where comfort leads us. Comfort leads us to places that we don't wanna go. And what, we, what we're all craving is to be alive. It's not just about working out. It's about how do I deal with hard things everywhere in my life? And if I don't practice that, when hard things come, when I don't pick them, I'm not gonna be in a very strong position to deal with it. CrossFit Games, in my opinion, is like the promo package for what's possible. Most folks in an affiliate work out one time a day for one hour a day. 
where the CrossFit Games competitor is obviously trying to increase their capacity, but for a dramatically different goal. They are literally trying to become the best athlete on the planet. They're trying to establish functional dominance over other competitors, where one here inside the affiliate is trying to maximize their capacity and be competent outside the walls of the gym. The games probably have helped push everyone a bit more forward because people have started seeing like what could actually happen. What happens at the games is just an extraordinary version of what happens inside ordinary affiliates, where they're coaching athletes to move well, to move fast, to progress in terms of their strength and their skill and their aerobic capacity, the way they move their body. And what you see at the games always inspires a different training approach in affiliates. So what you'll see on Sunday at the finals when we're crowning the fittest men and women on broadcast television worldwide, will also be taken down to a local affiliate level. Those movement patterns will be broken down and they'll be instructing ordinary athletes how to perform those same movements, maybe a little lighter or fewer reps or less load, but that same movement will start bleeding into ordinary affiliate training. The CrossFit Games is where the CrossFit community or affiliates can see the peak of fitness on full display. The best of the best do what we do within our affiliates every single day, but a, a level and a degree that probably shouldn't be tested within our affiliates, but they need to see it there to know what people are capable of. It doesn't matter what sport you follow, you can find a highlight reel and you look at that and you're like, man, that is just the coolest thing ever. The difference with our sport is that you can actually go and like do that thing and it's gonna have a positive impact on your life. You're gonna get fitter and healthier and better, more able to handle everyday life. And you never even have to get close to what those guys out there on the field are doing. So to me, it's a inspirational, aspirational highlight reel for everybody else to get fired up to commit to another year of training. And then that cycle comes around, you see what those guys are doing, you're like, holy crap, that's the coolest thing ever. And I wanna get in there and get my training taken care of. Thursday at the Alliant Energy Center continues as we kick off individual competition at the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. Thanks for joining us, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland alongside Chase Ingram. Mike Arsenault is down on the competition floor. We park the bikes. We're dragging out the pigs. Hey, second burst, same as the first. The men are doing the same thing that the women did, starting with that pig flip. Now it's 510 pounds, and the only change is in the middle 100 wall ball shots. 20 pound ball, 10 foot target, 150 gymnastics reps in the middle. Here we go. Recipe for success is delivered by Trifecta. Be wary of your time, and no one did it better than Laurel Horvath in the previous heat, is just work her way back to the last 10 pig flips because she saved some for the turn. Those last 10 flips may not get beat by anybody out here. Let's go down to Mike Ars Mike Arsenault was down on the field. Well, thank you very much, Sean. As mentioned, the pig is back in CrossFit Games competition, and it's not in the warm-up area, so rookies may have an issue, although Olivia Kersetter did not whatsoever. You mentioned it's 510 pounds. Give you an idea how heavy that is. The men will be taking this individually. To get these pigs on the field of play, it took four volunteers. 510 pounds, about 231 kilos. If you're watching this overseas. Two heats of 20 men will be on the field. And if you're new to this sport, you wonder, hey, do they have weight classes or height or anything like that? And the answer is no, because Colton Mertens and David Sharunke are on the field at the same time. The reason why we're leaving a lot of headroom there is because there's a big difference between the height and weight between these two guys. One of the biggest athletes in the field and the smallest athletes in the field. And like you said, Sean, there are no weight classes here at the CrossFit Games or in CrossFit at all because there's no weight classes in life. 
and that is what demands us when it comes to competing, training for the general physical preparedness. First of two heats is underway. Starts with 10 flips on that 510 pound, 230 kilo pig. Now what's cool here is that when we talk about the two different statues between those athletes and we have every walk of life between the two of them, is that in this test in particular, you have so many different elements that can favor different skill sets between those athletes. Burton's at 5'4", may not flip the pig as fast as everybody else, but when he gets to the rig, he is one of the best. So we'll see some ebbs and flows between different athletes as this test goes on. Arthur Semenov right now is your early leader on this opening set. One of our athletes here in heat number of 10. Seminoff 6'2", 218, 99 kilos. Track and field and weightlifting background. So what does that mean, how that transfers to the CrossFit realm? The guy is built for speed and he's built for power. You need both of those to be able to manage this pig. And at the opposite end of the field, on the right side of your screen is Kaiki Servani. In second place right now as Semenov is done with those 10 pig flips as a Cervani. Coming out of the South American Regional, first appearance at the CrossFit Games, won the South American semifinal. Set at 6 1 2 12. Archer Semenov making his second appearance here at the CrossFit Games as he gets to work on his 25 chest to bar pull ups. Finished 39th in his rookie year. Never finished better than 20th in a test. A set of 15 for Semenov. Servene, right about the same common rep scheme we've seen for all athletes as the women 15 to 10. G-Shock is giving you the chance to win a new G-Shock watch, a CrossFit Level 1 seminar, and more than $400 in CrossFit swag. Terms and conditions apply. Cervani and Semenov are done with their set of 25 chest to bar pull-ups onto the 50 toes to bar. They gotta hit the 85 rep mark before they will move on to the 100 wall balls. The leader's name at the top of your screen on the far left, that's where that will be located. And the number in the white box next to that athlete's name will indicate how many repetitions he has completed. The number in the white box next to the other athlete's names will indicate how many repetitions they are trailing the leader. 270 total reps here. Second of three tests that the individuals will face here on the opening day of competition the 2023 Noble CrossFit game last year that we will call Madison, Wisconsin, home to the fittest honor. Chandler Smith is starting to move up. I think about Chandler Smith, he's, he's, a, he's a grinder. He's, he's ex-wrestler, he's got that military background, but when it comes to events like this, it shapes up really well for his skill set. Super powerful, very athletic, and when it just comes to managing a total workload, this isn't a sprint, ever. That is not what this test is. It's a grind. It's strategic. Can I do sets of 10, sets of five? Can I manage my rest in between those sets? And that's something that fares well to someone like Chandler Smith. Chandler Smith, right now in fourth place. Spencer Panchik, also in the top five as well. Servany, Panchik, Seminoff, and Smith. Right at that 40 mark, Smith five reps behind that group. Serveni with five reps to go before he will move to the wall balls. As Spencer Panchik has moved himself into the lead, and that should be his last rep on the pull-up bar. Panchik was hitting set to 10. Hey, look at the difference between 70 and Panchik. Zemini is just, he's just long. He's got long arms, long legs, very beneficial when it comes to wall ball shots. Pretty quiet out here in the room. Panchik is on the left, Zemini is on the right. And right now, 
They are two of the three men, two of the four men, pardon me, on the wall balls as Semenov and Chandler Smith are working on their sets as well. 185 reps is what they need to get to before they will make the turn back down the field. Serveny just passing 20. 20 pound ball, 10 foot target. Looks like 25 for Severny and Pancheck. Let's see, Severny did 20. There's Archer Seven off on the left side of your screen right now. Third place. Fourth place in the battle with Bronislaw Lankowitz. Spencer Panchik continues to lead, though. 70 reps remaining for him on the wall ball. There's Colton Mertens. I mentioned him earlier. Right now, Inside the top 10, seventh place in this heat for Colton Mertens. Just past the 25 rep mark for Mertens. And the thing for Mertens is that, yeah, he's got a less range of motion on the squat, that's nice, but how high he has to throw the ball relative to his height, that's a lot more arms that he's gonna have to use. And the arms are a major player in this individual test. It's not about the legs. Yeah, the pig's heavy, it's 5'10", but that's more low back, grip, biceps, and press anyways. Let's bring in Mike Arsenault. Mike? Chase, for those watching who might be unfamiliar with the wall ball movement, I'm seeing a couple different techniques when it comes to the ball itself. The less rotation on the ball, it seems like those are the athletes who are able to string more reps together rather than having the ball rotate a lot. Why do you want a less rotation? Why do you want less rotation on the wall ball when completing this movement? When you look at the med ball and how it's packed, oftentimes as you do high volume reps, it, set, it tends to change the weight of the ball. So sometimes that rotation is because of the weight distribution in the ball and it makes it very difficult to catch in cycle. So if you can get away from that spin you have a nice controlled solid movement down and up but it's one of those tricks you do have to navigate as an athlete as you do those higher volume sets for wall ball shots the sun's starting to peek through more here at the north park we've been blessed with some crowd cloud cover here that is got the temperature from getting too out of control but now it's starting to get pretty hot out here Kaike okay. Cervani is still your leader. He and Spencer Panchik threw 70 of their 100 wall balls. Cervani is getting a couple of no reps on depth on the right side of your screen. And Sean, you mentioned that the sun has come out. That is a dramatic effect on where you're facing on this rig because if you're on the side facing the sun, that is a disadvantage basically looking straight into the sun where it's sitting right now in the sky on your wall ball shots versus the other half of the field. Jorben Carl Gumanson making his 10th straight appearance here at the CrossFit Games has moved himself into third place. He's through 75 of his 100 wall balls. Bjorgen Carl Gumitsen is one of the most consistent athletes this sport has ever seen. He made his CrossFit Games debut in 2014. He finished 26. After that, every finish has been ninth or better. It's just a wild consistency. It's why he's the greatest European athlete to ever do the sport here at the CrossFit Games. Took a top five finish in the ride earlier this morning. I know he's in heat one now. He is not going to be in heat one come tomorrow. Spencer Panch and Kaike Sirveni continue to swap the lead. In this first of two heats, 18 minute time cap. We're now halfway through that allotted time. 185 reps and Spencer Panchik is now there and he will move back to the pull-up bar for 50 toes to bar. That's big for Panchik because he made his move on the rig. That's where he caught up to your top two athletes coming in, which is Servini and Seminoff. Kaike Servini is done with his wall balls as well. 235 reps, that's the next mark they're looking to hit. And when they get there, the, they will then complete 25 chest of bar pull ups. And 
Sanchek in the center lane is ripping off a big set. 15 toes to bar. Servini and Gudemanson both doing 10. Smith with five, working his way to 10. The Bear Complex is giving viewers of the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games 20% off site-wide. Head to bearcomplex.com. Lucas Uknix has moved himself towards the top of this heat. Uldis is great gymnastics. Was, what he did before he started cross, it was almost just like these calisthenics and bar routines. Scott Panchik, or sorry, Spencer Panchik at 30 reps. Got Smith. 235 Smith. reps is the mark these athletes are looking to hit before they get to the chest bar pull ups. Well. And it's back to the pick for 10 final clips as Gervin Gumanson is just a handful of reps now behind Spencer Panchin. Kaiki Servani has fallen back into third. Chandler Smith and Uldis Utnix rounding out the top five. There is Spencer Panchik. One of the fittest families on earth. His older brother, Scott, competing in the Masters division, the 35 to 39 year old division. He was a fixture here at the CrossFit Games in the individual division for a while. And his twin brother, Saxon, has also been here at the CrossFit Games. And there is James Sprague. Sprague was creeping up towards the top five, but has now fallen off of that pace. Sits in 15th right now in this heat. And Spencer Panchik has now gotten to work on his 25 chest to bar pull ups. The only man on that movement at this point. And he ripped off another big set. 15 of the 25 done for Spencer. Chandler Smith is on to the chest bar pull ups, as is Bjorgen Gubins. And Uldis Upnik's getting to work on that movement as well. Starting to look at the times of their pig flips. Spencer is at 119, Goodman's in 141, and Upnik's 146 of the three. Spencer Panchik is now done and will we'll move back to the pig. He's got to flip it 10 more times. 510 pounds, 231 kilos on that thing. Less than five minutes remaining before we hit the time cap and Spencer getting to work on his first flip and that one looks good. Took him in a 20 second break from the completion of his chest to bar to that first pig flip. Now, Uldis Upnix will be the second man, along with Bjorgen Gubinson. <laughs> 270 total reps, that's what the athletes need to complete here. Spencer Panchik is through three of his final Ooh. 10 pig flips, and now he'll fail a rep as Upnix is getting to work. Gubinson's already got one down, and here comes Chandler Smith. And that miss was just a, a hand position slip. Like I said, there's not a lot of room to grab. It's a fingertip grab at the bottom of these pigs. Cole Sager is also moving to the pig. The two men making their 10th straight appearances here at the CrossFit Games are towards the front of this heat. That's Bjorgen Gumanson and Cole Sager. Spencer Panchi continues to lead though. He has five reps remaining. And Sprague is in the mix as well. And one of the taller athletes in the field. We got a lot of big boys in this heat. Approaching the 15 minute mark. 18 minute time cap here. First of two heats for the men. Spencer, 
Uldis Upniks and Bjorven Carl Gubinson are tied for second behind Panchik with Sprague and Chandler Smith neck and neck for third. And Colton Mertens is now getting to work on the pig. He's in the background. That was his second flip. Spencer Panchik is done. And Spencer Panchik setting the early time to beat. 15 minutes, 20.83 seconds. After that miss, took a step back, collected himself. His last five were much better than his first five. And that's probably some wear and tear starting to come off of, of the pull-up ring. Well, James Sprague is starting to catch up and pass Bjorven Carl Gubinson. Gubinson now in second place, just ahead of Sprague. Oldest Upnix has fallen back into third with Chandler Smith in fourth. Gubinson looking to finish second here in the heat ahead of James Sprague. Well, Gubinson is done. And BKG will take second in the heat. And now James Sprague, great charge from him. And Sprague is across. Uldis Upnik's trying to hold off Chandler Smith for fourth place in the heat. Uldis Upniks will do it. Upniks at 16.39.29 seconds, and now Chandler Smith is done. Chandler Smith, baby, get it done. Kaike Servani at the top of your screen, right now the leader on the field, along with Bronislaw Olegowicz. Got Mertens in that center lane. Seven reps in, he's going down a little bit of a break as Shurunke comes up. And now Shurunke and Mertens are tied. And a race to the finish between Olegowicz and Servani, and I think Olegowicz is gonna get the best of that. He does by three tenths of a second. Now Shurunke. Is trying to finish up. But Bailey Martin is out there as well. Bailey Martin towards the bottom of your screen as Shirunki is done. Martin is done. Less than now 15 seconds to go before we hit the time cap. Well, Colton Mertens gets across as well. Ten men able to finish inside that 18 minute time cap and it's Spencer Panchik who has the top time 15 minutes 20.83 seconds and Spencer Panchik had a hard charge in the middle through those Hunter wall ball shots big sets on the last 25 chest to bar once he got to the pig those first five were a little shaky and he had this miss and took a step back, collected himself, and then figured it out. His last five reps were his fastest five reps, and that's what got him to win here in test number two. Spencer Panchik goes sub-16 in the first heat. Jorben Carl Gumanson continues his strong start to the competition. He takes second, followed by Sprague, Oopniks, and Smith. Heat number two for the men, up next here at the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games.
Final heat for the men here in test number two as the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games are off to a great start here in Madison, Wisconsin. I'm Sean Woodland with Chase Ingram. Mike Arsenault is down on the competition floor. We will hear from him in just a second. We have one test down, and here are your overall standings. Jonakowski, who wins the opening test of the CrossFit Games for the third time in his career, picks up 100 points, followed by Jeffrey Adler, Jake Crouch, and Roman Krenikov. The Let's bikes are gone. Yeah. Let's just flip some pigs now. Let's do it one more time, shall we? <laughs> Ten pig flips, buy into this pyramid chipper out here on the North Park field. 25 chest to bar pullers, 50 toes to bar, and then that 100 wall ball shots, smack dab in the middle till you work your way back to the finish. The recipe for success is delivered by Trifecta. Anything change here for you? We've seen it manage your work well by focusing on your rest on those sets, but save some for the end. It's the pig. We saw it happen multiple heats in a row. Those last 10 flips are the decider. We'll send it down to Mike Arsenault on the field. Sean, we have 10,000 pounds of pig on the field of play, and just a tip of the hat to the event team here that is moving the 10,000 pounds each in between each uh, heat to make sure they're in the proper lanes. At 510 pounds per pig, it's actually the heaviest implement in CrossFit Games history that the individual men have attempted. 20 flips here in test number two, and as Chase said, who can manage these flips the best will emerge victorious. 20 men in this second and final heat. They're all trying to chase down Spencer Panchik, who put up a time of 15 minutes, 20.83 seconds. Justin Medeiros, your two-time defending champion, is out there on the field. He had a slow start. At 22nd or 29th place finish in the first heat. It might have been to a bike malfunction. So one of the lowest place finishes he's had in his entire career. Now, Yellow Hosta is a rookie out of Belgium. He had a much different experience in test number one. He absolutely did. A top 10 finish in that test. Three event wins in semifinals and one of the most excited people everyone is here to watch for this rookie. Stand by. Second and final heat is underway. 15 minutes, point two zero eight three seconds. Is your time to beat? 510 pounds on the pig, about 231 kilos. And all the men here in the second heat. Our groups tightly together for the lead. No one has separated himself yet. Well, and the big thing you're looking for on the first 10 is not necessarily who's doing it the fastest, but with the least amount of effort. And it's going to be an indicator of how these 10 are going to be on the back half of this test. Who's moving well? Who's struggling? Who's effortless as they navigate flip for flip for these 10 reps? Moritz Fiebig on the far side of the field. Now, center your screen. He's your leader by a rep over everybody else. 10 total here. And then it's on to the pull-up bar for 25 chest of our pull-ups. And more to the top part of your screen. Struggled with that last one, a little bit out of position, but he gets super close. But is how fast he gets, he skips his hip. He, sk he skipped the hip part. He just power cleaned the pick. Fiebig will be the first man to the pull-up bar, but not by much. As just about everybody else is done. Pat Vellner has now just finished up his pick flips. Justin Medeiros is still out there. Well, here's the thing that we saw from Justin in test one, and I actually talked to Chris Henshaw about this yesterday, is that these athletes need to understand how much the ride is going to take out of them for the rest of the weekend. And Medeiros looked like one of those athletes that just bonked out there on the race course. So the ability to recover, refuel, and get ready for a test like this is one of the big components that are outside the tests themselves. Roman Krenikov is now your leader. He already completed his 25 chest of our pull-up. But for more on Justin Medeiros, let's go down to Mike Arsenault. Well, I had a chance to speak to Adam Knight for uh, Justin Medeiros' coach between test one and test number two. And Chase, you mentioned during test one that Justin was in a good position that it seemed like he fell off. He actually fell twice on the same lap. That's what led to his uh, 27th place finish in test number one. But as you mentioned here in test number two, hasn't rebounded quite yet from that performance. 27th is the worst finish of Justin Medeiros' game's career. Mm -hmm. 
Roman Krennikov continues the lead, followed by Will Morad and Lazar Jukic. 85 is the number they're looking to hit before they will move on to the 100 wall balls. Roman Krennikov, who made his in-person debut at the CrossFit Games last year, finished second overall. Off to a strong start. Not only earlier today, but now here in test number two. Through 70 of the 270 total repetitions, he's got 15 remaining on the toes to bar. He's got that slow, big cycle on the toes to bar. The only downside is that time under tension. You're hanging on to the bar longer. Your cycle rate's a little bit slower, but the pros there is that you're using a lot more musculature to get the toes to bar done. So the movement itself isn't as difficult to do rep per rep. It's just a little slower. Lazar Jukic on the left side of your screen is trying to hold off Will Morad for second place. Lord Spiebig and Dallin Pepper right now in fourth and fifth. 18 minute time cap here. And Jig is at 35th place finish. And test one this morning. Krenikov is now onto the wall balls and he will not even hesitate. He picks that thing right up and gets to work. See ya. A couple strategies here on the wall ball shots. Set to 20, set to 25. And you just let the wall ball dictate a little bit of your set. If you find yourself maybe jumping a little bit or pushing a little too hard to get the last five reps, it's beneficial to just maybe cut five off, cut your sets down. And the wall ball shot is not where you're gonna make a huge move on the field, and you definitely don't want to put yourself into a deficit working your way back to the toes to bar. Approaching the five minute mark here. As Roman Krennikov continues to lead, he's through 25 of those 100 wall balls and counting. G-Shock is giving you the chance to win a new G-Shock watch, a CrossFit Level 1 seminar, and more than $400 in CrossFit swag. Scan the QR code on your screen right now. Terms and conditions apply. Lazar Jukic and Will Morad continue to hold steady behind Roman Krennikov. Brett Fakowski, meanwhile, is creeping up. He sits in fifth place. And Justin Medeiros is towards the back of the pack right now. Yeah. Mike talked about the two wrecks he had on the course. I don't know if this is a product of just being smoked from the test earlier or maybe some sort of potential injury from the wrecks themselves. This is very unlike Justin Medeiros. Brent Fakowski right now is in fifth place battling with another Canadian, Sam Cornway for that spot. The Count trying to gain ground on Dallin Pepper. The cows do that classic sweep of the arms and a reason why he does that, it keeps his tempo pace on the wall ball shots, but the other is that it, it allows his arms to drop, shake out for a half a second and come back up versus say holding your arms straight in front of you the entire time. It'd be like working out, but even if you just held your arms in front of your face for a minute, that's a fatiguing element. You let him drop, lets your arms relax for a second, and he brings it back up in time to catch the ball again. Roman Krennikov continues the lead. He's through 70 of his 100 wall balls. He has a four rep lead on Lazar Jukic for first place right now. Krennikov coming off a fourth place finish earlier this morning. In the opening test, ride. We talked about earlier making his in-person debut at the games last year. It was also the first time that he got to meet his newborn son. Top two on the screen, Lazar Jukic on the left. Roman Krennikov on the right. 
Fred Fikowski's now moved into third. Yeah, something interesting with Lazar on the left is he's doing sets of five. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. You see these other athletes maybe doing big sets, set to 20, set to 10, taking a 10 to 15 second break. Lazar, set of five, ball settles, puts his hands on, picks it back up again, and goes into the next set. Roman Krennikov now in his final rep, and he is done. He will make the turn back to the pull-up bar for 50 more toes to bar. 235, that's the next mark that Roman Krennikov is looking to hit. Scoring hat on top of the screen, the leader's name will be on the far left. And the number in the white box will indicate how many repetitions that man has completed. The number in the white box next to everybody else's name will indicate how many reps they trail the leader. Jason Hopper is moving on to the toes to bar. Looks like Sam Cornwaye is done as well. Will Morad chalk it up. Here comes Pat Velder. Velder right now in fifth place in the heat. Well, Velder needs a big, big finish here in this test. Starting the day off in a 20. A 27th place finish this morning on the ride. But Vellner always has a bounce back event. Usually it's here at the North Park. And he does it in dramatic fashion. It's either bottom 30, and then he comes back with a, with a test win. Lazar Jukic is now moved into first place ahead of Roman Krenikov. A lot of athletes with those grips on their hands as they work through these toes to bar. And Bear Complex is giving viewers of the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games 20% off site wide. You can head to bearcomplex.com to redeem that offer. Jason Hopper now sits in third place as Roman Krennikov is trying to retake the lead from Lazar Jukic. Pat Vellner is in fifth, neck and neck with Cornway and Morad. Vellner's about 30 reps in to those 50 toes of bar where Jukic Krennikov about five reps left each. Vellner in that blue shirt, center of your screen. 235, that's the number that Jukic and Krennikov are closing in on, and then it's 25 chest of bar pull-ups for them before they head back to the pig for 10 final flips. The first round of 25 chest of bar pull-ups, Jukic did it in about 49 seconds, Krennikov 39 seconds. As they're only separated by six seconds at the moment. And Jason Hopper there on the middle of the box on the right side. And now Justin Medeiros is the last man on the wall balls. This is not what anyone expected to see right now. Absolutely not, Sean. And he's moving well. Doesn't seem any physical ailments here. But just the fatigue, like you said, is just sitting down in a staring contest with the med ball in between sets. You just look at that body language. Medeiros is now moving back to the pull-up bar for his toes to bar, but we have a long way to go here. But two finishes towards the bottom. That is hard to make up with this field. We, we said it coming in. There's about five or six guys that are all in contention for podium spots and to win here. And one of them is that man, Roman Krenikov, onto the pig for the final time. Lazar Jukic right behind him. This has been the fight for the lead this entire heat, pretty much. 
Time to beat belongs to Spencer Panchik. 15 minutes, 20.83 seconds. Jukic needs a good finish. After this morning. Here comes Pat Velder. Velder now in third place. And now Jason Hopper is off as well. First set of 10 pig flips. Krenikov, Jukic, and, Ve and Hopper were all about 115 with Velner eight seconds behind them. But as we said, every heat so far, there's a big difference between the first 10 flips and the last 10 flips. Brent Fikowski is off. He's in that dark tank top and white shorts. Jason Hopper now moves into third. Fikowski right to work. Will Morad is getting set to start his final set of pig flips. And here comes Sam Cornwaye. Krenikov and Jukic dead even here. Now five flips remaining for both of them. Look out for Brent Fikowski. Velner has now tied Fikowski and Hopper. Morad creeping up and Cornwaye as well. Roman Krenikov. Has three left, Jukic has three left. Fakowski has moved solidly into third place ahead of Velner and Morat. Roman's found it. Roman's found his rhythm. Two reps left for Roman Krenikov. Final rep for Roman Krenikov. And start printing the leader's jersey with that man's name on it. He's going to win test two. Lazar Jukic is going to come across. Brent Fakowski looking to finish third in the heat. And maybe third place in the test. And Brent, who finished 10th at the bike, could be in a top three position going into the third test tonight. And Fakowski is in. Jukic de desperately needed that for points, but for Krakowski's fight to get back on the podium, that was huge. Top of your screen is Moritz Fiebig. He did really well on this implemented start, and now Fiebig is going to get in behind Fakowski and ahead of Velder. And now Velder is across. And a much better result for Pat Velder, as that will be good enough for fifth in the heat sixth place in the test as Sam Cornwaye is across. Will Morad on his final flip. And Morad is done. Two minutes to go before we hit that 18 minute time cap. Jay Crouch down in lane 19. He and Hopper are leading. Meanwhile, this on the right side is pretty shocking. Justin Medeiros has yet to get off the pull-up bar. But he's also right next to Sam Kwan, who got fourth last year. And Jason Hopper has finished. Now we cut down to 30 after oh, tomorrow. Man. Just something to keep in the back of your mind if this slow start for Justin Medeiros, if he's not able to correct this tonight. Olsen getting underneath the pig, trying to flip it and get it done. And tonight with that gymnastic Olsen, skills test, I mean, anything can happen with that type of execution-based test. And Sean, it's wild to think that you're talking about the two-time back-to-back champ just trying to make the first 30 cut, depending on what happens tonight. We'll get a long way to go. But he had his career worst finish in the prior test as Noah Olsen and Luke Parker race across the finish line. But Medeiros is possibly staring at his next worst career finish, if not his worst career finish in this test. Finishes, 30, seconds. 30 seconds to go before we hit 
the 18-minute time cap. Alex Vino with one final flip. And he is in. And it's Heinrich Hapalainen who sneaks across with a couple seconds to spare. And Yonikowski, who won test one, he's going to get capped. And Justin Medeiros is going to get time capped as well. And depending on how many reps he completed, Medeiros right now looking at a 37th place finish in this test. Johnny said we had a lot to go. You just got to get yourself in position to set yourself up for success. I can only think of, and not comparing the two, but I can only think of Rich Froning 2014, took a 27th place finish in one test, took a 37th place finish in another test, still ended up coming back and winning the games. Well, Roman Krennikov looks to be your overall leader heading into the third and final test of the day, and he was able to hold off Lazar Jukic late. And Krennikov is doing big sets. And Jukic opting for fives on the wall ball, and that kind of set him up nice in the gymnastics portion. Roman Krennikov, slow start on the pig, but we said on those last five, he got his rhythm and made quick work towards the end. Mike Arsenault was with Roman Krennikov and his translator. Thank you very much, Sean. Roman, great performance here on test number two. What is the difference level in your preparation this year compared to last year since you've had a year of living and training in the United States? Now, in this year, it was a lot better. The preparation was done. Because I bought a new family, a new team. I surrounded myself with people которые также горят целью стать самым физически подготовленным человеком на земле. Очень крутая команда, и благодаря ей здесь я показываю вам все, что я проделал за год. He absolutely loves this year. He surrounded himself with the greatest people in the sport. His team and friends and new family members, they helped him with to preparing uh, to this game. CrossFit Mayhem is an incredible place, and they helped him to show you guys the best he can ever be. Roman, there's a very good chance unofficially that after the first two tests, you're going to be wearing the white leader's jersey for the first time in your CrossFit Games career. What does that mean to you? Ой, я никогда не поддаюсь этим эмоциям, потому что прошло только два ивента, еще впереди 90% работы, так что я особо это никак не воспринимаю. Просто, ну, круто. He is very excited, but he doesn't pay emotions to it. There's 90 more percent of work to be done until the end of the CrossFit Games, so he's very excited. It's cool, um, but there's a lot of work to be done. Congratulations, we'll see you for you. test number three. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Roman Krennikov, 14.28.77 seconds. His second straight finish inside the top four, locks up 100 points, and looks to be your overall leader heading into the third and final test of the day. Lazar Jukic is going to finish second. Brent Fikowski will take third, and Spencer Panjic, who won heat one, will wind up in fourth place. Well, Chad Wilkinson served two decades as a Navy SEAL, but the real challenges for him started when he got home, and he wound up falling victim to something that affects way too many military and first responder families. Chad served almost 21 years as a U.S. Navy SEAL. Towards the end is when things just started to derail. He was my husband. He was my teammate, he was at home, he wasn't on foreign soil, and it was my watch. There's a lot of shame and guilt and regret that comes to people and families who've lost someone to suicide. And I carry that too.
so back in the day, Sarah, she's my best friend, lives here. Um, I got her to start CrossFit with me. Kind of like stalked her at a park when our kids were little. And was like, you're gonna be my friend and we're gonna do CrossFit. Um, and then she ended up becoming a trainer and then she coached people for years out of here, this little space, which is where I work out. Um, but we're going to steal one of her boxes and she's good with it. The freedom you have in a van, being a nomad, I like to be anonymous. I find it really just empowering being in the world and like no one knows where you are or no one knows your story. You could be like anybody you want to be. Welcome to the Willy Wagon. Uh, this is my van. It looks a little bit like a hot mess. I've been living in it for two months now, so it could be a little cleaner. I fell in love with the whole concept of being in this van and being this little nomad that I had already researched vans that I wanted to look at and test drive. Go ahead and ask me. Why do you have a disco ball planter? Why do you have a disco ball planter? Why do you not have a disco ball planter? That should be the better question. I mean, Chad and I worked together for 27 years. I only know myself with him. I don't know who I am without him and his influence in my life. So I'm, I'm really trying to learn that. See, don't you just instantly just feel happier right now? Like, I mean, come on. My dad doesn't like the beach. He's like, I don't get it. It never changes. You just look at it and you're like, yep, there it is. And I'm like, never changes. It's changing every second. The waves, the tide, like everything's always changing. The workout Chad 1000X, I talked about at his memorial. Uh, the workout 1000 box step ups with a 45 pound pack is what he did to train to climb mountains. I truly didn't, didn't think much of it when I shared that story, but Dave texted me and he was with some well-known friends, Adrian Bosman and, and James Hobart, and said, hey, we're gonna do this workout. Is that cool? We're gonna throw this down, I'm gonna snap a picture. And I thought, oh, okay, cool, go do it. So often hero workouts are done on the anniversary of death, right? Chad's anniversary of death is October 29th. However, Veterans Day is just a few days later, November 11th. And doing the workout Chad 1000X on Veterans Day and or around Veterans Day, to me, it's a way for us to, on the home front, show our support for our military. We've had over 7,000 military KIA. We've had over 30,000 die by suicide. That's an alarming statistic. Chad is just one of 30,000 veterans who have died by suicide. He's no real different. He's one of thousands of stories we could tell. And the veteran suicide epidemic is huge. And so if I could share his story and shed light onto the struggle that they face and do it over Veterans Day as a testimony to all of our men and women that are serving this country that might be struggling, that we stand with you and we see you, then maybe it could do some good. One of the most traumatic events you can experience in your lifetime is the loss of your spouse. Not everybody grieves the same way and some people take longer. Uh, I know for me it's gonna be the rest of my lifetime. Life keeps moving forward. You don't really get a chance to just freeze in time. Even though in grief, you feel completely frozen in time. No matter how good of a person you are, no matter how accomplished you are, no matter the successes you've had, it could all be gone tomorrow. I choose to live every second of this life to the best of my ability. Sarah Wilkinson joins me right now, and Sarah, thank you very much uh, for the time today. 
you mentioned that 30,000 service members have taken their own lives since 9-11, and you're a voice for the families of those 30,000. Where have you summoned the strength to be that voice? Oh, man, that's such a great question. I don't really feel like I was given an option. I honestly feel like God or a higher power put me in this position. Um, I found a lot of strength and support from my family and from the community, and I've really leaned into that. And I have made a promise to do everything I can to not have another spouse sitting next to me in this position. That piece was filmed uh, just under a year ago, and you mentioned in that piece that you didn't know yourself without Chad. Do you have an answer to that question now? I'm working on it every single day. This gives me a lot of hope. Um, and it makes me feel like I can still honor him while moving forward and helping other people. We saw some pictures of your family. You have two kids. They're both in, uh, in college right now. How are they doing uh, five years later? It's interesting. I have a son and a daughter, and we both carry this grief and trauma separately, but I think we all do it with a tremendous amount of grace. And I just make it very clear that I'm there. I'm not going anywhere, and I'll always be there if they need me. For the people here in Madison and watching uh, around the world, how can they get involved to help service members and families in your situation or just service members and families that are struggling with mental health issues? It's such a great opportunity to return back to CrossFit. That's Chad and I's background. And while we talk about veterans and their struggle, many people struggle with a silent whisper that affects their internal dialogue. And I think that can reach out to the commoner, the everyday man that goes to a CrossFit gym. So we hope that you'll participate in Chad 1000X on Veterans Day. We hope you'll register at chad1000x.com or you can donate via my website, thestepupfoundation.org. Sarah, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, thanks. Sean. Thank you, Mike. Have a lot left to go today. Our ESPN Plus covers will go until 7 p.m. Central Time. We will crown age group and adaptive champions. And then we'll be live on ESPN2 for two hours starting at 2 p.m. Central Time. The Finding the Fittest Show, Dave Ryan, Tommy Marquez, Jason Kalipa, Annie Sakamoto, Tom Yazga, and Adrian Conway taking you through that. And then test three for the men and women, the inverted medley. Two tests down, and already we've had a lot of surprises. Roman Krennikov looks to be your overall leader for the men, and Alexis Raptis based at the top of the overall standings for the women. One test remains here on day number one as we head inside to the Coliseum. Stick around, everybody. Our coverage continues here on the opening day of the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. The 2023 Noble CrossFit Games are presented by Noble, the official footwear and apparel brand of CrossFit. Rogue, don't weaken. Jocko Go and Jocko Mulk, the official energy drink and the official ready to drink protein shake of the Noble CrossFit Games. Wild Health, winning is in your DNA. Unleash it with Wild Health. And Momentous, the official supplements and sports nutrition partner of CrossFit.
This is the guy right here that I told you about, <laughs> all right? This guy, when anyone walks in here and they tell me, I can't do this, I'm like, this is the guy. Go, go, talk, to, go talk to Henry. When I think of CrossFit, I think of Henry. And when we open these doors, that's the person that I wanted to serve. The day I walked into CrossFit Mentality, I could not air squat to a 45 pound plate on top of an 18 inch box. You could imagine what it was like for me to just get out of a chair, stand up. I remember him telling me that he hadn't climbed a ladder at work and he couldn't even remember when. And even going downstairs, he was holding on to the railing and going down sideways. At that time, I really thought that this is what getting older was, you know, and obviously I was very wrong. There you go. So instead of pulling right to here, I want you to think, try to pull a little bit higher across your chest. There you go. Let's get one more big pull. Nice. And relax. I think the most important thing when you have somebody that's walking into your gyms is you got to build the trust and you got to explain to them what your goal is. And when Henry came in, I told him, this is going to change your life, but you need to trust me and you need to show up. He happened to be in the lobby when I came in to basically sign up for my on-ramp and he just had a short 30 seconds with me, but he said something to me that I'll never forget. He was asking me how I feel and why I'm here and I told him I have some bad knees and maybe we could correct it. And he looked at me and said, you stick around here long enough and you probably won't need knee replacements and the man was correct. Focus today is gonna to be trying to improve our positioning on our squats. So what we really wanna do is get the ankle nice and warmed up along with the hips and everything else. And then the more we can get this elbow down towards this toe, you can see that knee's starting to track out. That's what's gonna open that up for that overhead squat here today. Dude, you're clearing your feet so well now. Like that looks easy. That looks easy, bro. That looks easy. That's what I'm talking about. He's always got a smile on his face now. And I think he's just happier and hungrier than ever because once he started to see that progression happen, it was just, it was so life changing. He's like, I want more. I want more. I want more. And he just kept investing and doubling down. Oh, now you're just showing off. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> nice, dude. All right, so look at the difference here now. All right, and then even on this next one, when you brought your hands overhead, that was... I didn't want to scab my nose. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> when I came to Mentality, that just, it was like I jumped out of train and, and all that just changed. And every day was better. You know, I, I, all of a sudden I could do this, and all of a sudden I could do that. One more set, last one. Getting to see the progress over five years of just nonstop work, showing up, not missing, and doing the things that he needs to do, and then getting to see how it changed his life. That to me is like winning the CrossFit Games. Cool. Well, that's all I got for you. Okay. Good job. Thanks, buddy. Christian, to our yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> You can do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can do it.